to our event. But yeah, like I said, this track is massive. Hopefully everything is going to be A-OK. -okay. We just did a UID grab or we're about to do a UID grab uh, here in about 30 seconds. Uh, so not sure what's uh, not sure what's going out uh, just yet, but uh, we'll get the race started here in about 10 minutes. But great to see everybody, whoever's going to join us here on Twitch today, hanging out as we get a overhead look uh, at this track. I mean, it is incredible. Um, you can see so many different areas of this track are going to be a really difficult challenge. Shout out to Gatlin Plays. Thank you so much for the uh, follow. And as well, good to see you in the chat room. I believe that is Jack Gatlin, who we will see racing here today. Uh, but yes, this race has been ran by Matthias Lidman for the past, uh, I think, six years. I think he started it in 2017 and uh, going to get ready to go racing it here again today. Two hours, essentially, is what this race is. It is a four-lap race. The lap times are around 30 minutes. Uh, some will take 45 minutes or 50 minutes to complete uh, this track. There are going to be around 60 riders on the gate, 180 or so signed up and ran a lap time. Looks like as of now, as of the UID grab, there is only about 60 in the server. Uh, so I think because of that, there will probably end up only being about 50 people on the gate or so. We'll see how many there end up uh, actually being, but uh, we'll get racing here shortly. They're going to do a couple things, make sure everything is good with the frame rate and stuff like that. I'm also going to need to do a couple frame rate checks myself. Uh, I think we're probably going to be running today around the 40 to 50 FPS range because not only is this track massive, normally we don't stream with 60 riders on the gate. The max we do is 40. Those are usually much smaller racetracks. Uh, so this is going to be a little intense on the graphics card today. We're going to try to make sure everything is good with that. But uh, bear with us here the first kind of 10 minutes or so, and then and then we'll get racing. We'll get things started, and we'll see these guys make their way around this racetrack. You can kind of see a few of them down below. Let's actually go down right below us here and follow whoever is going through this rock garden as we're going to zoom right over top of them. And you can see just how unbelievably gnarly this track is. That's the 28 machine. I believe that is our fastest qualifier, Frank Jackson. And uh, he went fastest on the prologue of this track, which was about a three and a half minute lap time of the track. A little kind of like shortcut version. And he did a 319, I believe it was, for the fastest time. You can see how ridiculous the track is as we follow it around, come up to the next rider on your screen right there, the 433 machine, and then it just keeps going and going and going and going and going. I mean, this track is incredible. Massive rock gardens. Here's another uh, rider, the 14 machine right there. You can see riders going every which different direction. So this is, this is actually going to be kind of fun to follow uh, the progress of a lot of these guys and see... Uh, we're going to see some massive leads probably at some point. We're also going to see big gaps from riders battling for a position. And hopefully we end up seeing overall a, a pretty good race. So it looks like we're sending bike acknowledgements now, getting ready to get racing here in just a little bit. They've done the UID grab. So that is all good. Looks like people in the chat room are hanging out. Good to see you. Supercross Pig, Gatland, and Speedin in the chat room. We're going to leave chat up for you guys so you can interact with the race as it happens as well. And um, four laps on this track. This is going to be intense. So this is about to be my first kind of check with frames. We're going to load in everybody who is supposed to be in this race and make sure that all is good there. Track is crazy. Yeah, the Lonely Duck. It is an unbelievably long racetrack. Like I said, lap times will be around in the 30-minute mark. At least that's what Lidman uh, predicts. So this is about to be a two hour race more or less. And if any of you have played MX simulator, you know, that being that good, that consistent for two hours, uh, is really difficult. It is not a, not an easy task to behold. And this game will challenge you to its limits. And this track will challenge you beyond your limits for sure. So it is going to be quite an interesting, uh, perplexion to watch here. So it looks like frame-wise, not doing too bad. Uh, how many riders are we going to have on the gate here? We have 20, 30, 40, 50. All right, so exactly 50. Looks like we'll have 49 starters total. And uh, yeah, four laps around this track is, is going to be nuts. going to be a lot of fun. 
Uh, see, they start with five laps, as you can see on the screen right now, but it's because they go right through the finish line to start lap one. And uh, that means that the, the laps, the lap times after that can be counted, basically. So the first full lap through, you actually get a real lap time. You can see where everyone is at. And uh, yeah, it's going to be about two hours long. Like I said, 30 minute lap times, four laps. And uh, you guys are going to be with us every step of the way. Good to see you, though. Uh, speeding in here as well. Like I said, Supercross Pig, uh, Senior Bl uh, uh Senior B-L-Y, or whatever. <laughs> Good to see you. And uh, first time chatting here as well. Be sure to follow this channel as well. This channel right here, Start Your Systems TV on Twitch, will be the home of Race Factor Gaming, Supercross, and Motocross moving forward. We will also have our VODs replay on Start Your Systems TV on YouTube. Going through a little bit of a rebrand right now with the Start Your Systems main channel. So we're going to start taking a few things that you've seen there over the years off and instead uploading some really exciting new content that I think you guys are going to be excited about uh, come the new year. Still waiting. I hopefully didn't time out. I may have actually timed out now that I think of it. So let me disconnect and reconnect real quick just to make sure. But I think I should be should be able to get in. What's up, Gooby? Good to see you. Hope you guys are all having a great day. Saturday. Not often we stream a race on a Saturday. And so uh, this should be a lot of fun. Uh, just want to make sure that we get in the server to begin with. Oh, speed and already redeeming the hydrate. Don't worry, I got my water. Right there, a little bit of refreshing. Oh, look at that. We got 46 riders on the gate. Looks like, uh, yeah, the frames are actually doing okay. Um, it is going to be a little intensive off the start, but everything looks to be pretty well okay otherwise. And, um, yeah. It's like everything is kind of loading. I know the track is going to look a little bit weird. I did have to turn my graphics down quite a bit for this to work okay, and I actually reverted to an old snapshot. Just letting the race organizers know that I am good to go whenever. Let's take a look at the cameras real quick and see how this looks through here. Yeah, I knew, I knew some of these cameras are going to be a little bit rough, so we'll be kind of switching back and forth between some first-person views, some third-person views, and then also see some views like this as well. So you can see like Jacob Holgerson, this is a good camera view. We'll catch a few guys on the cameras throughout these woods. There's a hundred cameras scattered around this racetrack and you can see log sections, rock sections, rock gardens. They're going to go through water. Um, I mean, switchbacks, trees, you name it. This track pretty much has it. Lidman doesn't pack any punches behind with this racetrack and, and certainly makes it quite a bit of a challenge for anybody who is daring to race it here today. So yes, definitely need to stay hydrated. Because this is going to be a long one. You're actually probably going to see a few guys if they have a tip over or something like that. You, you very well could see some setup changes in the middle of this race. You could see guys stopping and, and actually taking a drink of water so that you'll see them stationary for a little bit as they drink water at their desk because yeah, we've got a lot of guys going to the gate, and uh, not all of them are ready to do this long of a race. Trying to see if we can find our defending champion, the man who organizes this race and puts it all together. That is, of course, Matthias Lidman. There he is rolling through. I don't think we caught him. Let's see if we can find him. Might be just uh, the back of the actual rider field here. Nope. I did miss him. Okay. I just saw him go through. Looks like we are just about ready. Geometric at zero, last warning. I don't know what that means. I think, I'm not sure if they're going to do something or what. Just want to double check that I am not missing. All right, this is going to be it. This is going to be the start of the race officially confirmed we're going to make sure we get loaded in loading those bikes is going to take a little bit but i think everyone else will be in the same boat all right we're loaded up let's see anybody else yeah we still got we're still waiting on some guys making sure everybody gets in and this is going to be a three row start 
So three rows of 20 riders basically is what this start is about to look like. And there is our defending champion, Matias Lidman. Look at all of those riders ready to go, ready to drop this gate. You got the one of Lidman, the two of Ethan Parks is here. You got the five. I think that's Jack Gatlin. The 30 card is going to go sideways. And we are going to be racing four laps at Gotland. Let's go. It is an absolute drag race down. You can see all the riders jockeying for those positions. And it looks like that might have been actually Gatlin going down as Seth Carr is going to rip the whole shot. He goes deep into the first corner and sliding through goes Lois Gorin on the 14 machine. And we are off and running. This is going to be a long race, though. So don't worry about that one bit, folks. These guys have got a lot of time to try to figure this out. Riders going down. I think that was Parks maybe barrel rolling in the background. As we watch these guys all siphoning through, look at how many riders are going down, jumping on each other through that back section as Goran launches out. He's got Seth Carr right behind him in the two spot as we weave our way through some of these early treacherous spots on the race course. You can see how deep some of these ruts are. There it is, Goran, Seth Carr, Frank Jackson, our fastest qualifier up here. Here's a little water jump over a rock and then another water jump right there. These guys pretty clean through there. We're going to see some crashing though. No question about it. These guys will hit the deck a few times. So don't expect it to be a clean race from here as Goran's going to go over through our first set of logs. Oh, and right there is Seth Carr down out of second place. That is going to move uh, Frank Jackson into the two spot. There goes Ethan Parks. We'll see our defending champ just yet of Matias Lidman. Lois Goran just got sideways. Gonna keep it on two wheels, and Frank Jackson's starting to close that gap down already. But like I said, this is... This is long. We're only a minute in to what will be a two-hour race here. So this, this little early jockeying for positions doesn't really matter all that much. It's really just about being clean on these opening laps, not getting caught up in any of the chaos or the drama. Goran going to tiptoe over those logs and then down in through these early rocky water sections. Frank Jackson is hot on his heels and then parks on the two machine also coming <clears throat> into the mix as Lois Gorin kind of hops through the logs launches out over the back and now he's going to work his way through some of these switchbacks so let's kind of stick here for just a minute as these guys work their way through there's the 14 and the 28 of Gorin and Jackson as parks goes over the bars out of p3 and coming through first rider on the two stroke that's a 242 ride we'll get a number on him when we can and see Everybody else coming through right here. That is the one machine. I think that's Seth Shirley, actually. The five right there, I believe, is Gatlin. You can see just how spread out the field already is. Our defending champ, Matias Lidman, back here. The 21 right there might be actually Devin Davis. There is Lidman on the one going by. So you can see how buried back in the field. we got some guys taking each other out. Little cross-ups right there. Just trying to jockey for these early positions is so difficult. You just want to have some free space on the racetrack where you don't feel like you're caught out by others and you're able to kind of just get away from everybody and, and ride your own race because this track is so challenging. The last thing you needed is to be challenged by other riders on the track as well. Oh, and the 10 machine lands on the 42 right there. And then he front flips over him. He just went down right there. Yeah, he just went down. My goodness. This is uh, some early chaos. A couple more riders still working their way back. You can see riders all the way back through the field still trying to work their way through. This is, we're now outside of the top 30 at least, almost outside of the top 40, I'm sure. And there's still more and more guys coming. This is a long field of riders that will be coming through here today. So let's, now we've seen kind of everybody in the field. Let's head back out front. Frank Jackson is in the lead and it is close. Ethan Parks is right there on him on the two. And I think that is still Lois Gorin. Yeah, Lois Gorin as Parks jumps over Frank Jackson. He's going to take the lead. So Ethan Parks on the number two ride. Now out front, but Jackson is going to hop right back by him. And now he's back into the lead. And now Parks goes down out of pirouettes as Jackson into your living room right there. Scoots on by and heads back up the hill. This is kind of a tricky switchback section right here. So he's going to kind of jump down. You're not really going to see him for a minute. He's going to weave through these rocks, and then we'll see him pop over through here. I think there's a bridge coming up soon as well that they're going to go. Yep, right over here. This is a bridge section. Oh, Jackson hung up a little bit. Here comes the 242 of Josh Collins. A two-stroke up in the mix. T.S. Lidman, who 
like I said, puts on this race. Says he loves riding a two-stroke because they're so easy to get around this racetrack, but this track is not easy to get around on anything. And now Collins leads, but here comes Parks trying to get a nose in there. Pushing to the outside goes the two machine. Cuts back across. He has got a low line that's working for him. And he takes the lead, and Collins gives it right back to him and puts him down. So Jackson moves back into third. We got people hanging out in the woods through here as they work their way back. I think this is where they're going to go under that bridge section uh, that we just saw right here. They're going to switch back and then down under the log, so crossing off. And then I think this is our first speed check section. So out of this, here comes Collins on the two-stroke, and Jackson on the 450 is going to try to close that gap down in our speed check. He's going to pull up alongside, and he is going to zoom by Josh Collins into the lead, into the braking zone over those braking bumps. Frank Jackson now out front. Collins back down the inside, takes it right back, though. And Parks shuffling around behind them, hoping he can jump into the lead. Might actually try to jump right into the mix here as they split three different lines. Look at Parks going way out there, comes back across. Jackson actually takes the lead away from Collins, and then Parks got hung up a little bit back there. So this is quite a mix-up with these guys shuffling back and forth through the trees. Really interesting perspective to see this alongside because it looks like they're just alongside and then they whew, pull away from each other on either side of the racetrack. Got a little hop right there and then a huge off-camber corner as Jackson tiptoes around. Looks like Collins went for the high line, lost a little bit of time. But now our fastest qualifier, Frank Jackson, is starting to feel a little bit of the flow and has some breathing room behind him as we go through another split section using the rocks to kind of hop through right there. Like I said, the prologue is where a lot of these guys spent their time doing qualifying laps. So uh, Frank Jackson was our fastest qualifier, but it wasn't on this exact track. It was on a much shorter version. And that's why I think you're not seeing as big of a gap as early on. Now, I, we do expect gaps to open up a little bit more as this race goes on. But so far, it is tight at the front. These three are not letting each other go whatsoever. Ethan Parks is keeping it close. He is right in there behind Collins and Frank Jackson. They'll go back to the side view of the cameras, hopping over a little bit of water right there. Then we got a little inside rock corner right there. I mean, look at these guys. They really kind of spread away from the field. There's not too many people I can see in the background, but nose to tail at the front for these guys. Oh, Parks went for the double over the log, kind of came up short. Seems like Parks maybe has the a little bit more of the sending side of him coming out today. Not afraid to launch out over some rocks and some logs and stuff like that. And it looks like he maybe just got around Frank Jackson. So Collins and then, yeah, now Ethan Parks is up into second. Jackson must have went down as we weave our way through the trees. Collins coming through on this side. Oh, look at this rock hill. Collins gets a great run up it and is off scot-free. Parks lands on top of that rock. He's got to get over that rock. It's a little sideways at the top, but he is all good. Here comes Frank Jackson. We'll see how he does on this hill. Hopping through there nice and tidy. Oh, a little bit short. He's low on momentum, but he's just going to squeeze over the top of the hill. And now back to our four spot, Seth Shirley. Reigning 250 national champion in Race Factory Gaming Competition. That's why he's got the one on his bike. He is the first 250F we see going up this hill. He's got a little bit sideways. He's going to make it through. There is Jack Gatlin on the five. Seth Carr right behind him. So some good battles just outside of our lead group. Cohen Moat doubling his way up the hill. Then Matias Lidman, the defending champ, right behind him, up and over the top. Here comes Devin Davis weaving his way through. He is looking fine on that Yamaha. Doubling his way through those rocks up and over the top of the hill. He is good to go there. Got Jacob Holgerson now weaving his way through. 503 on the two-stroke. And he's actually got a close fight with Anton Carlson. I think these are a couple of Swedish riders battling it out with each other. Tom Quino. All these guys looking pretty comfortable through this hill except for Quino, who just went off the side of the track. We got Taj Dixon. He's actually right behind... Uh, yeah, that's uh, ooh, someone else over the top of the hill. Ryan Neal went by. And, oh, Banal just ran really hard into Taj Dixon. I'm trying to figure out why Ryan Neal didn't pick him up originally, but he is in the 14 spot back here. So he actually moved through some of these guys. Let's head back up to our leaders real quick. Ethan Parks is now in front, but Josh Collins is still right on him. And first look at a huge rock garden right here. These guys having to tiptoe their way through. 
log right in the middle of it. Throws off the momentum. Parks gets a little wayward on the exit. Now he's trying to weave through this stuff at the top of the hill. Let's see, oh, crossing over right there. I know it looks a little bit bad because the game is taking a while to load all these textures, but uh, like I said, had to turn the graphics down to make sure we could actually stream this with how many riders there are on the track. But it still gives you a good perspective of how you know narrow some of the sections are on this track. And Parks, ooh, kind of hopping through them a little bit, a little bit awkwardly. Let's move this butter through here. Parks, pretty solid at. Supercross and Motocross, national number 38 going into 2024. And has a little bit of a knack for these enduro events as well. Has competed in quite a few of them over the years. And I believe he is number two because he finished second at the Gotland Grand National last year. So he is starting to pull away now. Josh Collins definitely lost quite a bit of time in these last few kind of segments. Frank Jackson also falling by the wayside. So let's kind of tiptoe back and find some more battles. Gatlin fourth. Here's Seth Carr in fifth. He's got Matthias Lidman right behind him. Lidman tried to cross over. Oh, he's going to send it up alongside Seth Carr, but this is, this is really tight and narrow through here. Uh, Senior Bilat wants to know, did anyone practice the racetrack or no one uh, know it was going to be this race version? Yes, the race version did come out without timing gates, so you could you could go and actually practice the entire track, but it's so long, there's not really any way to really memorize it. And they waited until very late to release a timing gate version, so you couldn't find ways to cut timing gates and stuff like that. I don't know if anybody really would have studied it anyway, but uh, there's not really much that can prepare you for how long and daunting this track is. You just have to ride it like an enduro track. Kind of take your time, not rush things, don't jump stuff that you don't know is there. And... Uh, just hit your marks, really, is Seth Carr, speaking of hitting his marks, just was off the mark. And they are going to close up now on Gatland, who's on the five. So Gatland's made a few mistakes. You can see him just disappearing off your screen. Seth Carr with a cheeky little hop over line, but pushed the rut and is going to lose that position now to Matthias Lidman. So Lidman up to fifth on his way towards the front, but he's already a minute and a half off the lead, I think, there or thereabouts. Uh, not too bad, actually. About a minute off the lead. Like I said, we are going to be in for the long haul in this race. This is only 12 and a half minutes in. We have not even come close to completing the first lap here. As these guys look at this rock garden right here. As Gatlin going off the screen, he made it through well. And Lidman just finding his way through out of that one. Once these guys spread out a little bit, we'll definitely start going through the field, kind of letting you know where everybody's at. You can keep track of where your favorite uh, competitor today is at the top of the screen. We got that running scroll bar to let kind of everyone know. Oh, that rock wall didn't get a great drive, Lidman, but still made it. And he has got Seth Carr still right on him. This is a nice little battle for the five spot. Gatlin has been... Doing a good job of staying just ahead of them so he doesn't allow Lidman into the picture to close up. And then looking back out front, it is still Ethan Parks who is pulling away. So we'll stick with this battle as Gatlin almost went through the front door. Swivels through the turn right there. Lidman hot on his tracks. This is a really tight section of the race course. We'll go on board here now with Lidman who is closing up on Gatlin. And this gives you a really fun perspective of what it's like to try to close up and figure out how to make a pass on someone on this racetrack. Look at this, down the inside though. Great line by Lidman. Look at that. That was beautiful. Now, he is the one that builds these tracks. So you could say he has a little bit of an advantage of knowing where everything is because he obviously laid it all down. But, uh, man, it is not easy to know where anything else is on this racetrack. He could have spent a lot of time building these rock gardens, and he still probably doesn't remember everything that he put down and where it was and how tall it was and everything like that. Oh, almost through the front right there. But now the... Number one is up to P4. And this this section, this little run through the course right here that they're on, really one of the more difficult sections because there's a lot of rock gardens and there's a lot of hills. And if you lose momentum, you get stuck on a rock or two, 
and then you have to go up those hills with no momentum, you lose a lot of time, or you might not even get up the hill. You might get stuck completely. So they're really having to be careful. And Lidman, man, he is not content with moving into fourth. He wants a piece of Frank Jackson. So Jackson in the three spot, our fastest qualifier, not finding the track too well in the mid part of this first lap. 15 minutes have come and gone of uh, this two hour race, four laps around the Gotland Grand National Enduro track. Oh, and there's a front end tuck for Jackson Lidman. He is being steady, smooth, and consistent, trying to work his way forward. Still Josh Collins in second, and our leader remains Ethan Parks, 26 and a half seconds out front. Seems like a big gap, obviously, but uh, just a couple quick crashes, and that thing is completely gone. And on top of that, you still have a lot of time left in this race, so even little mistakes will add up over time if you're Parks. Like I said, we're most likely going to see some really big gaps at certain points of the race today, and we're also going to see those gaps diminish completely at some points as well. Even someone like Lidman, who started outside of the top 10 when we saw him through that first little speed check, he has already worked his way up to fourth, and he's just been creeping up on everyone ahead of him. Park's just smooth and consistent. Blowing through this back section. Now this is where it starts to open up just a little bit more as you're on the edge of the Gotland race circuit. Look at the really deep holes and a lot of water coming through right there. The Parks is now going to start trying to hop through it almost like a supercross rhythm section. And then, ooh, last minute U-turn right there. But man, he read that really well. I didn't even see that. And suddenly he's just flipping around going the other way. So this will give you a good perspective. He's coming back now on the direction of the course that he just came from. You still cannot see anybody coming towards him. And now he's going right towards where he came from the other way. So we, we don't see anybody behind him. He's got a 51 second lead now, does Ethan Parks. Massive, massive advantage. And we still don't see anybody out there yet. So where is second? There is Lidman now second. You see him just at the back of your screen right there. He still has to go through like six or seven more corners before he gets to Parks. And so one and two in your program book. Now one and two on the racetrack, but in reverse order. Parks, who finished second in this event last year, is leading on this first lap. And you're really starting to see these Enduro specialists shine through. Frank Jackson may have had the fastest qualifying time, but it is consistency that kills. And you can see Parks hugging the edge of the racetrack, hopping through things really smoothly, not rushing things. Was rushing a little bit earlier, but I think he was so keen to get into the lead and try to open up the gap. And now that he's in the lead, the gap has steadily been improving. Almost a minute lead. Pretty solid for the first 17 minutes of race action here today split section right there. So here's Lidman in second now. Got around Collins. We didn't see where that happened, but it was through the exit of those rock gardens. And now Jack Gatlin is actually up behind Collins. So what happened to... Where is Frank Jackson? So Jackson is now here. Oh, he's actually back ahead of Lidman. Excuse me. I missed that. So Lidman lost a position to Frank Jackson again. They are now a minute behind Ethan Parks, who we just saw come through this exact section right here. This little hop over the water and we saw pretty much this exact same thing they crossed over and then hugged the right side of the track we saw parks going through here looking really solid and now look at Lidman he's going to change it up he's going down the left side and he's kind of hopping through like a supercross rhythm section oh Frank Jackson just backflipped in the two spot and here comes Lidman side by side, going to make that pass back into second place. Oh, and our third and fourth place riders are down. Collins and Gatlin just squared off. And Gatlin is going to go by. Collins slips back to fifth. And meanwhile, Lidman has gotten around momentarily. Frank Jackson, no. Jackson fighting back. And they're still going at it for the two spot. Split lines again, and this time they'll follow each other into the right side of this racetrack. Cameras switch through this next timing gate. This is a little bit of like a rhythm section right here. So you're going to triple in, triple out, and then on the rear fender through this speed section, Jackson oh, is going to try to take over from Lidman. I don't think Jackson knows where the track goes. He keeps slowing down. He thinks that there's a turn, 
And uh, Lidman was able to kind of sneak away because of that. Really efficient through those switchbacks. And I think Jackson was not sure when to break right there. So on a 450, obviously could have just went right around the two-stroke, but not really having the track knowledge hurt him there. Obviously, these guys going four laps. He'll, he'll learn that section by the next lap and know what to expect going through there. But Lidman using the ability to know this track a little bit better than everybody else to his advantage through those sections right there as now we're down on this backside of the track again. Jackson really good through those bumps and uh, tried to hook that inside rut cleanly. Closing back up on Lidman for second. Parks 66 seconds out front. Jackson to the outside. Cuts back across to the inside. The lines cross again. And it's still Lidman holding on. Rock Garden Who's good through this one. Lidman really smooth and efficient right through that middle line and opens it up. Now we got a big inside hump that Lidman goes over and got, uh, Jackson, I should say, laid it down. Kind of hops over it awkwardly there and keeps going. And that gap has opened back up now. So here's Gatland in fourth. He just got around Collins again. He is on his way. Then we got uh, Jacob Holgerson starting to close up. Seth Carr also back here. So it's still pretty tight amongst these guys. We're 20 minutes in now, 21 minutes to be exact. There is Carr, Tom Quinneau back here. These guys are these guys are actually quite a ways back from this group. So our front, what, seven, seven riders are about a minute ahead of the next group. Obviously our leader Parks is already a minute ahead. So you got like a minute back to second and then second through seventh are roughly a minute apart from each other and then another minute back to eighth. Here you see Steve Bonall on the impact Husaberg. I think this is uh, meant to be a 300 so that's why it kind of sounds a little bit funny. Good little battle, tight battle with Quino. Just kind of following each other at the moment though. Bonall is Contemplating an inside move. Got close, thought about it. Backed out of the challenge. And then into this rock garden. So Banal on the Husaberg. Feeling a little bit froggy. Oh, gets into the back of Quino, who checked up to double that gap. And Banal goes down. So here comes Seth Shirley. He is going to try to gap across. No, he will not. He backed out of the challenge. Swing out to this outside line right here. You can almost kind of tell that some of these guys haven't seen these sections yet. Surely looked a little unsure what was going on right there. But when he can see ahead, obviously charging quite well. So this is 10th place on the racetrack right now. Seth Shirley, 2023 Race Ranger Gaming National 250 champion. He is on Steve Banal, who is on that Husaberg 300 just up the track. What are we thinking so far, chat? How's the race breaking down? What do you guys think is going to happen? We have an hour and 40 minutes left of racing to go. And Parks is looking real comfortable out front. Pretty large gap over the rest of the pack, but things can change. Is it going to be Parks? Will perhaps Lidman close down? Maybe Frank Jackson, as he learns the track, will get a little bit better. Or maybe even some of these guys further back will start getting the ball rolling here soon as well. As Benal makes a mistake and surely takes full advantage to go into ninth place. So Banal 10th, Reno Brennan on the zero is in 11th. Ash Dixon getting a little bit sideways. He's going to lose a spot oh, as Devin Davis jumps over him. Davis now will go to 12th. Good ride for Davis. And Dixon settles for 13th. Ooh, look at this fight right here. Bodie Parker with uh, Loris Medard and Cohen Moat. Really close together. See them going down this back straightaway. Parker and Medard on the JH Yamaha. While Cohen Moat launching onto a rock. Almost ends up going backwards on the track right there. You got Ryan Neal, Anton Carlson, Mozart, who is the one actually putting on this event. And Killiam Ortiz in the top 20, but doesn't really matter position-wise for these guys right now because there's no points up for grabs. It's really just where you finish in this race. Uh, Nate Van Tatnov has moved into the 21 spot, got around Jay Turner, who was down. Rico Delat, now 23rd. We're seeing these same sections that all these guys have gone through many minutes ago now as Carter Vanderbeck is in 24th. David Bradley 
Solid ride for him in 25th as Anthony Pachone holds on to the 26th spot. Chez Titley is in 27th with John Mushy in 8th. Uh, 28th, I should say. Xander Vosebeld noses in and goes over the bars. He was 29th, and it looks like he should stay there. Johannes Brindall in 31st right now. Just got passed by Reese Martin on the 7. Uh, Teo Tesseron. 32nd for him. Here's Brett Powers. Donut holding down 33rd right now. Uh, Thomas LaVillaroy. 34th for him. Uh, Mateo Murat just went down in 35th as Clement Potencier is going to try to close up on him. Potencier looks like he is in full send going quadding through the rollers and it's going to make that pass stick. Ben Sullivan right behind him as well trying to get by and will just not do it as Mateo Murat gets going. Tobias Schitz right here is in the 38th spot. Jace W, first rider out of the race by the looks of it in 39th. So he has called it quits 25 minutes in, hasn't even made it a full lap, and his race is done. Brandon Huntington going down as he gets by him. Oakle, Oakley Kettle, I should say. Now moving into the top 40. Paul Brené, 42nd. Danny Thierry right now in 43rd. Oh, Romain Cornette also out of this one in 44th. Uh, Tylen Legain out of it in 45th. Samuel Renard out of the race. Pablo Vial also done. Jason Helm, uh, Seth Van Tatnev out in 49th. Lois Gorin, who we saw leading early on, already out of this one in 50th. Corinton Julian called it a race, and I am in warm-up. So at the moment, looks like we still have 42 riders circulating this track, and we have not yet completed one lap of this. But we are coming close to completing the first lap. Oh, we got another rider out. Uh, Shirley. Seth Shirley looks like he called it a moto pretty early on here. Not sure why. But he did just disconnect, so it wasn't a timeout. Um, and he was battling for that top 10. Must have just uh, had enough of it at that point in time. Back to our leader, though. 88-second lead for Ethan Parks. And as we go to him, he goes down. Seth Shirley says, too many rocks. He's sick of it. Can't deal with the rocks anymore. Got bored. So, uh, yeah. 41 riders still going of the 51 that started. And Parks picks it up from that crash. So trying to see how much of this lap is still left for him. He has probably got another six, seven minutes to go. As we see him weaving through some of these lap garden or rock gardens, not lap gardens. 94 second lead though, man. Comfortable, looking comfortable, I should say. Almost looks like he pre-ran this track a little bit, which is, is key. Didn't need to... Uh, I think he qualified an eighth or so on the prologue. And really, you just needed to get in. I mean, it, qualifying first in this race didn't mean much. Obviously, being top 20 mattered to qualify and be on the front row. So you could have a good spot going into the first corner. But we, uh, you know, we saw some guys on the front row get shuffled back as early as 20, 30 feet off the gate. So even that qualifying good didn't really matter. And Ethan Parks turned a uh, eighth or ninth qualifying spot into a 94 second lead thus far on the first lap. But as I've said many times already, it's not going to matter much. Uh, it's going to take a few crashes out of him and some solid riding from riders behind him for that gap to disappear. So if you're Parks, big lead right now, doesn't matter. You still have an hour and a half left to Try to hold it. Hey, shout out to uh, Camilla Sultan, who actually just subscribed to our YouTube channel. I'll need to uh, turn alerts off on YouTube since we won't be streaming on YouTube anymore, but uh, shout out Camilla Sultan. So Parks opened it up to 96, but he had a crash, remember? So now Lidman closed it down to 87. And if you think that Ethan Parks will not have eight more crashes in this race, I I would highly doubt that that is going to get away from there without crashing. Hey, Seth Shirley, thank you for the uh, third month of subscribing with Prime. Hashtag for the fans. Love it, dude. I really appreciate the support here on the channel. And yeah, if you're here, you're enjoying this race so far, consider subscribing. Like I said, if you come back in the season, this is going to be the place where a lot of the Racing from here on out will live. Um, I'm trying to 
get some stuff going to maybe have some AMs be streamed, some GPs, some EU stuff, and some MX bike stuff as well. So don't you worry about you bikes, people. We got you covered. We we'll get some bike streams coming in 2024 as well. And Moto Gogo gracing us with his presence in the chat room today. Good to see you, Moto. Hope all is well. So we're watching Ethan Parks right now. I think we're coming pretty close to the end of the first lap. I wanted to stick with him and kind of see what a first lap time is going to look like on this racetrack. 98 second lead though. And 53 seconds behind Matthias Lidman is Jack Gatlin. So we're starting to see those gaps really open up with the lead group. Parks is making it look way simpler than it is though. This is not an easy track. There's a reason why the reigning national 250 champion called it quits on the first lap. <laughs> Uh, so, Senior Bilat, uh, basically, I'm going to stream some bikes races, but it, I don't plan on it being the ARL races or anything like that. Don't want to step on Navo's toes at all. Uh, but I do think that we'll do some invitational races. We'll do some ride days in MX bikes and some things like that that we will uh, we'll definitely stream and we'll have a good time with that. All right, looks like we are about to end our first lap here on this course. So let's see. Ethan Parks is going to come through right here, which is not technically the finish line. He's got to go all the way down this straightaway now. And all the way down into the first corner. So he is going to check in at a 30-something. What is it going to be? A 30-45. One lap is in the books. Finally completed. I know it says lap three on his pit board, but it's because it's a five-lap race technically uh, because they started with five laps. But cross the finish line onto lap number two out of the first corner. So Ethan Parks finally gives us a lap time. 30-45 at the end of lap one. And now the next question is, how long until we see the next rider come through the finish line? And on top of that, how long until Ethan Parks maybe gets into lap traffic? There's every uh, chance that riders on this course today will not complete four laps because the leaders will have opened up such a substantial margin on them. They'll catch them. But Parks is really in control at the end of that first lap right there. So we'll go back to Lidman and see how things are going for him as he weaves through the rock garden. Want to get a lap time check on him, and we'll kind of we'll kind of see where everybody is at the end of the first lap before we really dive into some more battles. I mean, we got so much racing left to go here today that uh, we'll be sure to to get everybody involved. We'll make sure everybody gets some stream time, a little bit of love on the broadcast. That's what it's all about. That's why I wanted to stream this event, have a little bit of fun. No one's hydrated me for a little bit, so I'll hydrate myself. Now that we have one lap in the books. And Lidman is about to come down onto the start straight here at the Gotland Grand National. Boom, there he is up top. And he's going to click over, and we'll see him wide open down this straightaway on that two-stroke. And we'll see what lap time he is going to check in at as he flies into the first corner hard on the brakes. And lap time, 32-22 for Matthias Lidman, lap number one in the book. So basically a minute and a half slower. Uh, than what Parks ran, but that's fair. And Lidman just went down, hit his head on an inside pole right there. That's pretty fair uh, based on the 99 second gap. So pretty much what we expect to see lap time wise. But I mean, you can see the the variance in lap times. You know, Parks could easily run a 32 uh, minute lap time coming up here on lap two, and then Lidman would lay down something in the 30s or maybe low 31s to, to close that gap right back down. There's every chance we can see things change around, and Parks is not just going to run away with this thing scot-free, I have to believe. So Jacob Holgerson has gotten around Frank Jackson, and we have got ourselves the second Swede in the top three, along with Lidman. We'll see what Holgerson's able to put down to end his first lap here. Holgerson wide open through there. He's going to check in at a 33.22 and Frank Jackson will go 33.30. Now remember there might be guys across the line almost side by side that will have different lap times because some guys are down in the first corner. So 33.35 for example, you know, Jackson uh, Gatland is not exactly five seconds behind Jackson, but that's because they went through the first turn a little bit different. 33.45 uh, and a 33.47 now for Josh Collins and Seth Carr as they check in in sixth and seventh. And a pretty big gap now back to Tom Quinneau. Thank you, Speed, and we'll hydrate as Quinneau checks in on the eighth spot onto the main straightaway. 
I have a little, we'll have a chip too. All right, 33.55 for Tom Quineau in P8. Here's Steve Banal. And we got a lot of people hung up in the Rock Gardens back behind Banal there. I want to go check that out in a minute. But Banal's going to check in in ninth. Reno Brennan is about a minute behind him in 10th. And I want to see, where is this group? It's a group of like five or six guys like nose to tail here. And they are just outside the top 20. So we got Delat getting around. Killiam Ortiz, David Bradley's right there. But it seems like they're maybe opposite of the track of some guys going the other direction. Yeah, that's why it looks like it's so bundled up right there. There's really only three guys right here that are close together, but in the map in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, you can see it's way closer together <laughs> than it looks with a lot of these guys. Oh, Bradley. Oops, out. Hey, vote, 209. Thanks for the raid. Just tuning in, you're watching the 2023 Gotland Grand National in MX Simulator. A 30 plus minute hard enduro course that these guys are going to be doing four laps on. And it is brutal. You can see how gnarly certain sections are of this racetrack. We haven't even seen some of this stuff because Ethan Parks is so far out in front. Killian Ortiz just went down. David Bradley's going to take a spot. Owen Vote. So let's check in on some more lap times that we probably missed. Steve Banal came in at a 34-42 lap one through. 35-34 for Reno Brennan. Uh, so that also kind of gives you an indication how far back they are of the leader because 35-34 for Brennan. And remember, our leader, Ethan Parks, checked in at a 30-45. So he was on the first lap alone about four and a half minutes faster than the guy in 10th place shows the disparagement i mean it's fun at the beginning when we had three guys nose to tail for the first 15 or so minutes but it has quickly divulged into a runaway for ethan parks at the front we'll see if he can keep the ball rolling for the entirety of the race as he sneaks up the inside of that big off camber holgerson and then jackson Ooh, we got a battle brewing right here we got three riders nose to tail and they're hung up jackson collins and seth carr all in the same stretch of racetrack right here there is Jackson in the four spot. We got a battle. Here comes Seth Carr. Jackson cuts him off at the pass through the logs. And here comes Gatland as well on the five. So four riders all in the same rock garden battling for fourth through seventh. And Gatlin was hoping to pass all of them. He just went over the bars. And Seth Carr says, thank you very much. I'll go right back by you. And the positions remain as they were entering the rock garden. Fun to watch these guys figure it out. Uh-oh. Who's that hung up right there? That was Jackson. Ended up completely sideways in the banners. Allows, uh that is Collins to go back by into fourth. Carr now fifth, Jackson sixth, and then Gatlin in seventh. And I believe behind Gatlin is that massive gap to Quineau. Yeah, about 45 seconds back to Quineau. But Quineau's done a pretty good job. He's brought Banal with him and a massive gap back to uh, Reno Brendan. Some more lap times. Let's check it out. Bodie Parker laid in a 36.07 at the end of lap one. And then Lois uh, Medard put in a 36.19. He's in 12th and almost just went down. Uh, Taj Dixon put in a 36.29 in 13th. 36.28 for Mozart, who's in 14th. Devin Davis is 36.27. So these guys all basically just ran the exact same lap, but you can see not exactly nose to tail. Devin Davis also in the mix, though, right behind Mozart. Oh, and he's going to use some super cross skills to hop through those rocks really well, make a couple passes into 13th. Beautifully done by Davis. Here comes Ryan Neal. He's going to make a pass. He's going to get into 15th by the looks of it. Got around Taj Dixon, who was all over the place. And then as Dixon tried to pass him back, he goes down in this hefty rock garden. So Jay Turner, 37.09. Cohen Mote at a 37.25. You got Anton Carlson at 
Rico Delata, 3805, 3815 for Killian Ortiz, 3816 for David Bradley, 3837 uh, for John Mushy. Nate Van Tatnev at a 3833. Carter Vanderbeck, 3855, 3909 for Jez Titley. And Anthony Pachone is going to check in here shortly. Nine twenty-six for Pachone in twenty-seventh. Don't worry, Chris. We know Seth Shirley is not built like that. He is a closed circuit kind of gentleman. Xander Vossabel is going to check in here in the twenty-eighth spot. 39.55, 39.51 for Teo Tesserone. And there's our first 40-minute lap time. Reese Martin in 30th checks in. <laughs> this is a good little battle for 28th, 29th, and 30th. Like, these guys are racing everywhere, man. It's not just the lead group. Johannes Brindahl just about landed on a 40 flat perfectly and disconnects. He did one lap, did a exactly 40-minute lap time, and said, I'm good. <laughs> Brett Powers at a 40-21 is going to go by. Thomas uh, Levilleroy, he's going to check in probably at the 41-minute mark. Tobias Schitt's here. Wild side number eight machine. Uh, poor old Ben Sullivan caught in a rock section right here. This is a tricky racetrack. So 34 riders still circulating, or 33, I should say, still circulating ahead of uh, Sullivan. Brian Dahl just pulled off the track, remember. Oakley Kettle in 36th. Brandon Huntington, 37th. Paul Brunet is in 38th with Danny Thierry in 39th, and Seth Shirley is still in 40th despite not finishing this one. Clement Potencier, Matteo Marat, Jace W, Romain Cornette, uh, Tylan Legain, Samuel Renard, Pablo Vial, Jason Helm, Seth Van Tottenham, Lois Gorin, and Corentin Julian not going to finish this one. So 30, let's see, 38 riders still going because Danny Thierry still has to get around Brindall. So 38 riders. Uh, will be still on the race course after one lap of competition. I want to see what Tobias Schitz lays in. Uh, Brian Dahl, like we said, did that 40 flat. Oh, Brett Powers also called it a moto. 40-21 for him. And Carter Vanderbeck, 38-55 and 31st. He's done as well. So Tobias Schitz is going to move into the top 30 here soon with a 42 flat. First time by. Looks like he is probably going to be on his way to a three-lap moto here based on uh, how far behind Ethan Parks he is after one lap. And then Ben Sullivan checks in at a 42-26. So Brandon Huntington and Oakley Kettle, uh, Paul Brune, Danny Thierry, really all these guys I would imagine can probably finish top 30 here today if they just keep it going. Back to our race leader, Ethan Parks, though. Oh, uh, Johannes says he got cramps in his fingers. So I had to call it. I mean, you could get cramps in your fingers, pull off for like a couple minutes, reset, and go again. I feel like if I spent all the time prepping for this event, getting ready for this track, motoring on it, and then actually deciding to start it as well, then I would, I would do it. Like, why not? Just do the whole thing. Say you actually finish the Gotland Grand National Hummock Simulator. It's an accomplishment in and of itself to do two hours of this. As brutal and boring or whatever it is that you want to call it may be, I still think it's a, a cool accomplishment to have on the resume.
mean, Ethan Parks is at the point now where if he finishes the lap, uh, second lap this far out in front, he can really consider putting it in cruise control. Lidman's still going for it for what it's worth, but I feel like the lap times next time by are going to tell the story of this race. So Holgerson in the three spot, he's just been kind of tiptoeing along. I want to go back and see some of these other... I haven't seen some of these sections. Like, we missed after the top of this hill. Like, let's check out Mozart going up this rock hill in just a minute. I didn't really see it on the first lap because we just watched this hill. So I want to see kind of the next two minutes of track. We'll check out Mozart's perspective here. Let's go on board with it. Why not? Two strokes is way over the top here. All right, and now it goes down. Pretty interesting little sections back here. Really switchbacky. Got a log right here and then the drop down the hill. I do remember back when I would race Enduros, and I, I loved racing Enduros in this game. I would have raced this one today if I didn't commit to streaming it because <laughs> I had some fun playing it last night. I actually always really enjoyed the Rock Gardens probably the most, uh, even as many as there are on this track because it was such a different take to what you're normally doing like i've raced supercross and motocross in this game for five years and to come to a rock section and be like all right how the heck am i going to get through this cleanly it was a fun challenge like every single time i always personally enjoyed it yeah, definitely at least they're not statues the statues rocks were uh brutal mozart just went down is going to lose a spot to taj dixon Taj, I don't know if I'm saying it right. Apologies to the Dixon family. Pretty cool to see the way that these guys all hit the track differently. Like, Parks is still pretty sendy out front. It's kind of working for him. Some of these guys back here, they're really being methodical about it, which is the approach I would take. Like, I feel like I would be right about where Dixon is if I was racing this just because he's doing kind of the same things I would do. Just really tiptoe around. No need to send. No need to do something crazy. Cool little sections back there. Any battles? Oh, yeah, we got one here. Frank Jackson, Jack Gatland in sixth. How far away is Collins got? He's uh, 27 seconds up the road, and he just got Seth Carr for fourth. Because these guys kind of cut through some some uh, banners right there. Olgerson still inching up on Lidman, 38 seconds back. And Lidman, for what it's worth, has actually tightened the gap up just slightly on parts. Down to uh, two minutes and 20 seconds. No, two minutes and... Yeah, two minutes and 20 seconds behind. <laughs> Just slightly closer. Uh, but this is a fun little battle right here for P4 on the racetrack. So let's follow along as Collins and Seth Carr go at it. I think the thing I love most about the enduro races as well is that we get used to obviously calling a lot of the same names in the race factory races at the front of the field. And rightly so. Those guys deserve it. They're really, really good at Supercross and Motocross. But I like the guys that are normally kind of midfield guys that we don't always get to talk about are really solid at enduro racing in this game. And uh, we get to see them up front battling. Like Collins, we've seen in the top 10 a few times at nationals and stuff like that. And definitely Seth Carr as well. But... Uh, yeah, to be fourth and fifth, battling, going at it. Pretty neat perspective. Oh, a little sideways right there. Oh, 
that's a really cool section. Rock Little doubled down into doubling up onto an off-camber, and Collins made the pass on Carr, who was down on the inside, I think. So yeah, think you can do two hours of this course? Tune in next year, apparently. <laughs> This battle's still going as Carr almost lands on Collins. Gonna try this inside rut. Rips it. Collins trying to fight back around the outside, but Carr makes it stick and almost immediately goes down in the rocks. These guys are absolutely going for it. Look at how look at how gnarly this section is. And Carr finally, finally got some breathing room there. And they have dropped Jack Gatlin as well. All right. Check out back in with the leader. We kind of briefly showed him on this side of the track. Didn't really show him much after that. I want to see him kind of work his way through here because we saw a lot of the more 10th to 20th place guys do these sections. Parks is comfortably in control right now of this race. Check out from the camera view. Man, you don't even know what section of the racetrack he's going to be on looking through that part of the camera. Just a long straightaway coming at you is our race leader, Ethan Parks. Almost seems like he's getting... A little bit better on this second lap, 139 second lead. So about a two, yeah, still two minute, 20 second advantage. One thing we will have to consider a little bit about this track is there's so many timing gates that uh, of course people will probably get penalties because of that. Quick shout out to Emilian696 for giving a follow. Appreciate you stopping by and supporting. Okay, Parks is bouncing his way through. Right at the edge of the ocean. Hopping over a log. Ooh, look at this hill right here. He's got to get that log, and then it is just, oh, brutal uphill right here for Ethan Parks. And he made it to the top. A-OK. -okay. Now it's just another long straightaway of logs and rocks and switchbacks and big bumps. Tell you what, man, Lidman did not go easy this year on these guys compared to some of those past versions of the Gotland Grand National. But I honestly, I kind of like that. I would not like it if every single year it felt like the same track, same vibe as Parks goes down in the lead. Holy hell, Robros 02? Are you serious? The real in the person in flesh Robin Rosenwinge is watching an MX Simulator stream in 2023. I can't believe it can't be him. No way the legend himself is here. But I appreciate the follow, brother. Hopefully you were enjoying watching this chaos. Yeah, for those of you that don't know, you young whippersnappers to MX Simulator. I know Holtzy and some others these days with the edits are so sick with it and they do a great job. But uh, Robros 02, that's the OG right there, man. That I don't think I would have owned MX Simulator if Robros 02 did not exist with some of the edits he made back then. Sick stuff. 2010 track comp edit. Such a vibe. So cool to see him swing by. Celebrities. Uh, Ethan Parks, though, man. Even with that gnarly crash on the downhill... Doubling through stuff, no problem. 
What's he gonna do right here? I thought he might consider doubling up that hill. Look at that, it's like a staircase. All the way to the top. And now he's up here on this plateau. He is all by himself. Look at all around this plateau up here. Nobody else, because that's how far ahead he is. He's literally on an entire quadrant of the track by himself. Hey, shout out Big Mike 7774. Appreciate the follow, brother. Ooh. Parks with a kick right there. That's cool set that uh, Hunter got you into the game. I hear a lot of stories like that uh, where, like, top guys at the time, they just happen to know more people that, you know, are like, oh, wow, you're really good at that game? Like, you should check this out. It's pretty cool. And then those people get the game, and then they become the top guys, like you are now, Seth. It's uh, always fun to hear those kind of throwbacks. Like, I felt like that was pretty common. I'm pretty sure, like, Burkeen... I'm pretty sure Burkeen got into the game because of, like, Carson Tickle and guys like that. And Carson Tickle, who's Brock Tickle's younger brother, used to, like, win motos and stuff. And then Burkeen got into the game, won a championship, like, stuff like that. Always kind of cool to hear. Look at that downhill rock garden. Parks just puts it in fourth and lets the bike coast over all that stuff. And his lead just continues to get bigger. Almost, he's over 150 seconds in front. And uh, once he hits 180 seconds, that's a three-minute lead. Which he might very well get to before we're done with an hour of racing on this. Wonder if his uh, second lap time is going to be better. He's going to probably come through just a little bit past the hour. We got four, three and a half minutes to the hour now that this race has been going on. And he's kind of in the, the final stretches here, but some of these sections are tightening up a little bit, so it's not quite right to the finish line just yet. A little tippy tap over there. And down in transition. Just giving Ethan Parks his kind of due here as we get to see him really methodically work his way through the track. We'll go back and check out more battles on the third lap. I really want to see some more deep in the field stuff as this front group is really spread out. So maybe as soon as Parks crosses the line, we'll go to the very back of the pack and start working our way forward. Look at that. Hopping over the entire bridge. That's a bridge he crashed on on the first lap, if you remember. Whoop. Parks slides it down. Really uh, quickly want to mention, and I want to get this right, so I'm going to pull up the uh, thread. Want to quickly mention, there's actually three classes racing out here. It is one big race, so Parks winning the Gotland Grand National right now. It's not like he's in the wrong class or whatever, but you may notice he's got a red background with white numbers, and our defending champ, Matthias Lidman, has a yellow background with red numbers. Uh, that is because um, the different distinctions of the classes go by age group. So we essentially have a under 15 class and then a 16 to 25 class and then a 26 plus class. So Ethan Parks falls in the 16 to 25 age group, hence why he has the red backgrounds. Uh, it has nothing to do with him being the points leader or anything like that. He literally is just between the ages of 16 to 25. And then Lidman is above the age of 26. So he's 26 or older. That's why he has the yellow backgrounds. You'll see that on a few other riders like uh, Jack Gatlin, for example. He has the yellow backgrounds. He is also above the age of 26. But if we go further back, you'll see uh, Lois Modard here with the red backgrounds like Parks. He is between the ages of 16 to 25. I don't know... Green backgrounds is the junior division, which is under uh, the age of 15, 15 or younger. I don't think we've seen any green backgrounds. I think there are riders out here, but I don't know that uh, any of them sent me their skins. So unfortunately, we don't see any of the green backgrounds. But that's just a, a quick uh, lesson on why you're seeing some different colored backgrounds out there today. As uh, Parks is not checked into the fourth lap just yet. 
forget how old Ethan is. I think he's 23, 24 maybe now. And then Lidman's been around the community for a decade, so I'm pretty sure he's in his late 20s, 28, 29 at least. So it's out over 160 seconds now. Two minute and 40 second lead for Parks. And we just now hit the one hour mark of this race. These guys have been on this track for one hour. And if you're Ethan Parks, you still have two laps to go. Not even just that you have an hour left. It's really probably an hour and, hour and 10, hour and 15 minutes still left. So uh, we're going to have some tired hands at the end of this race. And I think if Ethan Parks hangs on for the win, we'll maybe even give him a call in the Discord and chat with him a little bit about it. I know he's on Discord right now. Or at least he was. Maybe he closed it so that he could be able to have the race track run a little bit smoother. So it looks like based on the lap time and the current time on the... Uh, up top. I think this is going to be a slightly slower lap for Parks. I think in the range of just over 31 minutes. Alright, so he's got two more corners before the big straightaway coming up. And I want to stick with him for that lap time. Then we'll go back and see how many people have DNF'd on the second lap that did not on the first. How many runners we still have left in this race? So parks through the switchbacks right there. 61 30 on the clock as he checks in right here. So an hour and or an hour, one minute and 30 seconds as he hits the start straight for the third time. And the lap time this time through for your race leader. 30 42. He was three seconds quicker, but there's that consistency. Almost ran the exact same lap time. You know, there's people that go three seconds a lap faster on a national track, for example, between laps. They'll, you know, run a 155, and then next time they'll go 152. He just did a 30, 30, 30 45, and then followed it up with a 30, 42. <laughs> so three seconds faster on a 30-minute lap time. Consistency kills. That's certainly the name of the game right there. So uh, still uh, Lidman, Holgerson, now Seth Carr, fourth, Jackson, fifth, Colin, sixth, Jack Gatland is in seventh. I know Brennan 8th has Bodie Parker right behind him in 9th. Uh, and Taj Dixon rounding out the top 10. Oh, Steve Banal has pulled off the side of the racetrack. The hour mark has gone over, and the 11th place rider is sitting stationary. Uh, not sure what this would be about. Hopefully it's not a disconnect because he's in a good position here. He's going to get passed right now by Jay Turner. But Banal, a pee break maybe for... Steve Banal, nothing said in the chat, losing another position right there as uh, it was at the just went by Lois Modard. Yeah, Banal just hanging out. We'll see if he gets going again. Was in probably 12th or 11th when he stopped and is now going to be back to 15th as Ryan Neal goes by. Hill crashes at the bottom of the hill. So let's go backwards again. Go through everybody who has DNF this race. So again, Corinthian Julian was our first DNF. He only made it 10 minutes in or so. Lois Gorin, Seth Van Tatnov, and uh, Jason Helm still here on the first half of the track, as was Pablo Vial, Samuel Renard. Uh, Tylen Legane, Romain Cornette still on the first half. Jace W on the first half. Mateo Murat almost made it to the second half of the first lap before he disconnected. Same for Clement Potentier. Seth Surly did make it onto the second half of the first lap and DNF, so he will be classified 40th. Johannes Brindahl finished the first lap and immediately DNF'd. 39th for him. Brett Powers, 38th with a DNF. 37th for Carter Vanderbeck, a DNF. And uh, Danny Thierry, look at him go, man. It's the little engine that could. He's going to be the first person that will get lapped. I'd almost certainly expect it to happen this lap. Ran a 50-minute lap time. His first lap 
but he is still chugging along in 35th place, folks. He is 792 seconds behind the next rider, who is the DNF Anthony Pachone, but he is going to get that position for sure. I don't even know what 782 seconds is. That's a massive gap. Um, actually, it's not too far away from where Pachone is, so I almost kind of want to stick with this and see him go by him and then see what the gap is to uh, Paul Brunet ahead of him. Anybody else up the road DNF? Yeah, Quino finally called it quits. He was remembering about 12th or 13th. Must have had a few crashes that led to that. Anybody else further up the road has DNF'd? No. These guys are all still going by... Oh! Frank Jackson called it quit in 6th, and Seth Carr in 5th also quit! Wow! Why would you race for a whole hour in the top 5 and then quit? That is uh, pretty gnarly in my opinion. But yeah, so three guys ahead of the last place rider have quit. So 32 riders still circulating as uh, Danny Thierry continuing on is going to get to Anthony Pachone here any minute. I think he's right over there somewhere. Yeah, he's going through the rock garden. He's kind of like directly in front of us somewhere over there. We can't really see him. And Ethan Parks will probably catch him in about 15 minutes by the looks of it. So this is where Pachone is. I think that this is... Yeah, he's almost there. He's going to come through right here. Right now. So yeah, there's Pachone. Officially going to be pushed back to 35th. There it goes. And Danny Thierry is actually 259 seconds behind Paul Brunet. So that is uh, 271 now. That is 3 minutes, 4 minutes... Four minutes and 40 seconds, if I have that right. Oh, where's he going? Oh, hopefully he knows that that is... Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, he did just go off the track. I'm just making sure. Did I do my math right? 60 and 60 is 120, 180, 240. Yeah, four minutes and 40 seconds behind the next rider right now, and he's stuck on that rock. But he's still going, Danny Thierry. Give it up for him, folks. He may get a top 30 out of this. Especially with all the DNFs ahead of him. And Paul Brunet is still going as well. Love to see it. There's no quitting these guys, man. They want to finish the Gotland Grand National, and I respect the hell out of it. Uh, 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 uh. Paul Brunet going off track. Easy does it. He's going to get around Tom Quineau here and about a couple minutes. So then Brandon Huntington is in 31st. Oakley Kettle in 30th. Tobias Schitz in 29th. Ben Sullivan here in 28th. So Schitz is just behind uh, Sullivan. Really only a couple seconds behind him. This is a good little battle still brewing. These guys will end up probably being around the 25 spot after they get around all the guys that have DNF'd. Uh, Xander Vossebeld is really far ahead of Sullivan, who just went down going the other way right there. He is a minute and a half behind Vosebeld. And Tobias Schitz is going to close up on Sullivan, who's down in the ditch right here. Is he going to get a pass on him? He's going to try to hop over him. He is, and he is going to stick the landing and keep going. A nice pass there by Tobias Schitz as Ben Sullivan almost loops it out. Schitz now up to 28th. Vossabelt still 27th. He is about to go by Reese Martin, I believe. Be coming through this. Oh, he just went down. Hey, hey, shout out Charlie 22. Thanks for the follow. And here comes Xander Vossabelt trying to get into 26th place through this rock garden. Hopping through. You're going to see on the right side of your screen any second now. Right there, Reese Martin. And he is being shuffled back to 27th as we speak. There it is, 26th now for Vossebeld. Thomas Lavilleroy still in 25th place. Steve Bonal is still sitting there, and Thomas, uh, yeah, Thomas Lavilleroy is about to get around Steve Bonal, who was in 11th when he pulled off the side of the track here. Still not sure if Bonal is going to call it a race or not, but he is about to be passed again by Thomas Lavilleroy. So Lavilleroy finds his way, his way into 24th spot right now. And 
but all going to slip back to 25th. Teo Tesseron right here in 23rd. As we are coming up to the 70 minute mark of this race, John Mushy in 22nd is right behind Jez Titley. And Mushy looking for a left side line right here, trying to make a pass stick. Goes to the outside, turns back to the inside here. Crossover, went for the double, he thought about it at least. And is almost going to get cost him right there, almost laid it down. So Jez Titley able to get away a little bit. Ooh, look at this rock garden. Can Mushy make the pass? Got up alongside of him at the top of the hill, nearly made the pass stick. Oh, he thought about going down the inside right there. And Jez Titley just able to squeak away. TSCZ108 stops by the chat. What's up? And Mushy is just all over Titley here. Uh, I want to see if he makes his pass stick. I'm trying to figure out how far ahead until they get to Frank Jackson. They probably got about two minutes till they would get around him. And this would turn into a battle for 20th place as Jackson and Seth Carr just ahead of that. Called it quits at the halfway mark of this race as John Mushy finally goes down, got kicked sideways. And Jez Titley is going to get away. Let's go a little bit further back, see. Oh, Steve Bonnell does finally call it quits. He sat there for a very long time and is finally out of this one. So that's going to be another spot for Tobias Schitz. Reese Martin just got passed by Ben Sullivan. Hey, shout out to TSCZ108 and Steve Banal3. Steve Banal looks like he just uh, called it quits and came right to the stream. So we watched him sitting on the side of the track for quite some time and uh, just now pulled out of the race. But the uh, battle still continues. So Oakley Kettle now up into 30th. <laughs> Bottle says it was so hard. Brandon Huntington still here. Paul Brunet, Tom Quino out of the race. How far away is Parks from hitting Danny Thierry here? I'm trying to see, uh, he's gonna have, yeah, it's still a little ways. Still a little ways for sure. But it's not long before we get to lap traffic. So where were we? We were up here at David Bradley, who is now in 20th. Have they gotten around Frank Jackson yet? No, but uh, Banal is out of the race. So Bradley in 20th will go to 18th eventually here. <clears throat> Rico Delat in 19th is going to get around Frank Jackson in the next couple of corners, it looks like. I think just on the backside of this rock garden. Rico Delat tiptoeing his way through. Yep, there he goes around Frank Jackson. So Rico Delat now moves to 18th. And how far ahead is Seth Carr? Just the next couple straightaways, I think. So at any point soon, we should see Rico Delat coming down the next straightaway. Kind of way over there now, I think. Actually, where the heck? How far away is he? not him that way I don't know we're gonna see him get around Seth Carr soon oh battle Devin Davis and Anthony Carlson exchanging blows for 15th right now and start getting some lap time checks on these guys here shortly and they're not too far behind Nate Van Tottenham Cohen Moat here in 13th anybody else up the track DNF'd no Three minute lead for Ethan Parks though. Oh, Davis thought about trying to get around Carlson. He is gonna pass him on the straightaway if he gets a good enough drive out of this corner. Ah, didn't quite get enough, but he's got that 450 power. He's gonna close right up onto him at the end of the straightaway. And halfway flags are out for these guys coming through in 15th and 16th. Look at how close this is. These guys have been racing for an hour and 13 minutes, and Devin Davis was right on the tail of Anton Carlson. And look, at they're right behind Cohen Moat and Nate Van Tottenham. Oh, Tottenham almost got absolutely sent across the track right there. Look at Cohen Moat. Almost thought about trying to pass attempt. He's going to jump to the far right side of the track right here. Smoother line still right there. Look at how close those lines still ended up being despite the 
difference in line choice by 20, 30 feet almost. And they continue to weave their way through. So I'm going to go back here again real quick. Uh, let's see. They have gone around Frank Jackson now up to Teo Tesseron is coming through right now. There is Teo Tesseron. He will move into 22nd around Jackson, who's out of this race. Thomas LaVillaroy, Xander Vossemeld, uh, Tobias Schitz, Ben Sullivan. Oakley Kettle is still on the... Uh, no, he's on the back half of the track now. Okay, he has gotten around Steve Banal. Brandon Huntington is going by Steve Banal now, I think. Yeah, there he is right there. Just going by right there. So Brandon Huntington will move into 29th. He hops down the hill. And then Reese Martin is still down. Paul Brunet and Danny Thierry are our heroes here right now. They are still chugging along. Danny Thierry is going to get past, or lapped, I should say, by Ethan Parks here in the next few minutes, probably. <clears throat> but uh, shout out to Danny Thierry, man. He is probably going to get into the top 30 positions, which will give him a number for this race next year. And it's just the no-quit attitude that we love about him making us so proud of him being the star of the race right now. All right. Um, let's, let's see if we can find a few more battles. Actually, you know what? Uh, well, John Mushy and David Bradley are going at it. Why not? Let's take a look on the start straight here if anything changes. Mushy's on a 450, so he's going to scoot away from Bradley. These guys improving their lap times. Let's see. Yeah, look at that. Jez Tintley went two and a half seconds faster than he did on the first lap. John Mushy goes about a second and a half faster. David Bradley goes about 30 seconds faster. So they're getting better. They're learning the track a little bit more. Devin Davis still all over Cohen Moat, who just went through the rocks pretty gnarly right there. And Devin Davis is going to say, all right, I am going to hop by you. Yep, annual event. This is, I think, the sixth year that this event has been held. Anton Carlson, Devin Davis, and uh, Cohen Moat absolutely going at it for 14th right here. Uh-oh. Left side line. Oh, Cohen Moat jumps him to make the pass. <laughs> Look at that. That was sick. Davis is trying to swing the outside line and get there, and he is also going to pass on Anton Carlson, but going to go through the rocks a little bit. Carlson gets right behind him and then runs him over as Davis is getting dragged. Did Davis miss timing gates? That was really odd. That was a sick line, though, that uh, Cohen Mode had. Anton Carlson not happy about getting jumped over. He is coming back with a vengeance right now. Oh, and then noses in to the log right there. Instant over the bars. Looks like he will still get up before Devin Davis gets there. It's crazy. Like, look at how close they are. And then that's how long it took Davis to get around him. But even Carlson sat there for a couple minutes. Oh, Davis into the rocks. And the battle's still raging on. Double across. Cross running. See that deep water right there. Oh, Carlson gets off kilter and lays it down. So Davis gets away pretty good with 14th place. Cohen Mo 13th. A Van Tottenham is still in 12th. He's not too far back of Ryan Neal, who is in 11th. Uh, Mozart now rounding out our top 10 with Lois Madard in 8th. Or 9th, I should say. Uh, Taj Dixon in 8th. Bodie Parker is in seventh with Reno Brennan all the way up to six. That's a good ride for Reno. He was a little bit further back early on. Uh, Jack Gatlin now up into fifth with uh, both Seth Carr and Frank Jackson moving out of the race on that second complete lap. Josh Collins running in the four spot pretty comfortably. 110, 110 seconds behind him, 120 seconds in front of him. So definition of all by himself. Jacob Holgerson has been inching the gap down to Matthias Littman for a really long time. When we first saw him, it was like 45 seconds. Now it's down to 30. This might be the most interesting battle for the podium positions at this point, is whether Holgerson can close it down enough to get to Lidman. Lidman's still in second. 
192 seconds off the lead. That is three minutes and 10 seconds off of Ethan Parks, your race leader, who's working his way through the rhythm section right now. And he is going to get to... Going to get to um, our last place rider and put him a lap down a lot longer than I expected. I actually thought he'd get to him sooner. But uh, this, this is a long course, so... Yeah, Ethan Parks is absolutely moving through this track. Closest lap time to him is Holgerson's 3108. Everyone else is 32, 33, 34 above. But Parks has put back to back 30s up. 3045 first lap, 3042 second lap. No one else is in the 30s, but the closest is, of course, Holgerson out of 3108, and he is still charging, trying to get to Lidman. Let's actually get an idea of what the gap is here. Let's see visually how close this is. So I want to see, have a, a camera where Lidman's coming at us in a minute and see. Oh, Lidman's going to go down. So that gap is actually going to go even further down. So here comes Lidman now through this section. Hopping through right there. <laughs> Look at this, man. This is crazy. And then going to have to U-turn right there, flip back around, and then come back hopping through. So we'll wait right here. There is second place Matthias Lidman, our defending champion of this race. And how close is Jacob Holgerson? I hear him. He's going to be coming through the section. He's going to enter your screen on the left side. Oh, there he is. He just went down on the bottom left side of your screen. So... All that time that he gained from Lidman's crash just lost it right there. But that shows the gap of how close it is in our battle for second place right now. And you can see him now coming through this section here. He's going to hop his way in. So yeah, it's, it's a little over 30 seconds now, I believe. And uh, he's going to continue on rolling. So let's see. It looks like we are about to finally get into lap traffic as we go all the way to the very back of the pack and find Danny Thierry, who just now is about to go by Reese Martin. He's sitting right here, disconnected, and Danny Thierry is in the rock section coming at us. And Danny Thierry is now going to move into 32nd place. Inching his way to the top 30. We're all going to celebrate once he gets there. But there is Danny Thierry now going to... 30 seconds. Steve Benal disconnected about 10 minutes ago. He sat there for about 20 minutes and then finally disconnected. So Danny Thierry. There is Steve Benal in 31st. Danny Thierry will get to him in uh, not too long, actually. Let's stick with Thierry and see him go around Benal. Oh, almost went down. I'm sticking with him, though, because Ethan Parks is closing on him in a hurry, I would say. Probably almost within the next minute, Ethan Parks will be on Danny Thierry. It might actually even happen on this uphill. So here comes Danny Thierry. Let's see how he navigates this massive rock uphill. Tiptoeing, really metering that throttle. Pretty good drive. He's just going to go through the banners. I don't disrespect that whatsoever, being... Able to actually just make it up the hill is first thing you need to get done. And he's done that. So he's through the next set of timing gates. And then uh, Steve Banal is just around the corner up here. So we'll see Thierry coming through right there. He's just at the top of your screen. You can see a little dot moving towards us. And then Ethan Parks is going to be right behind him at the top of the hill in a minute. So here is Danny Thierry moving into 31st. He's almost in the top 30, people. Keep it going, 917. And as we look back, here comes Ethan Parks, your race leader. Finally going to see somebody else for the first time in about an hour. He has not had to pass anybody since about 15 minutes into this race. We're now 83 minutes in, and there goes Ethan Parks, our race leader. So Danny Thierry is going to see the two machine go by him shortly. He is 286 seconds back of Paul Brunet, who has now moved into 30th. They will get around Frank Jackson and Seth Carr shortly, though, so as long as Danny Thierry just keeps going, he is going to be in 30th place here in a couple minutes. 
Uh, but here comes Ethan Parks. I can hear him. I can see him back there. And as Danny Thierry almost loops out, he's going to get that blue bar here shortly with Ethan Parks starting to close that gap down. High centering on the rocks. Just a little bit. What do the cameras look like? Here we go. Look, at he's even just going to pull aside and let the leader go. What a nice guy. Look at this. Not getting in the leader's way. He knew Parks was coming. He just pulled off to the side and stopped. This might be my new favorite, my, my new favorite racer right here. Danny Thierry. We're going to sign him to an SYS contract tomorrow. Get the pack ready, Alex. Look at Parks just hopping through stuff on the other side of the screen. Thierry just tiptoeing his way through. So Paul Brunet, going to be a little while before Parks gets to him. Uh, but Brunet is going to get to Frank Jackson here in a few corners, then Seth Carr. Anybody else up the road has disconnected. Jay Turner is out of this race. He was in the top 20. And anybody else up ahead of that? Oh, everybody, uh, everybody's still rolling. Everybody is still rolling. So Ethan Parks hopping through stuff, making it look easy. Almost at the hour and a half mark of this race. Look at that, just floating over the rocks. It looks like he's almost riding a different track sometimes. He's going so fast it takes the textures a while for it to load. Three minute lead though, three minute and nine seconds to be exact. But that's just to where Lidman has last passed the timing gate. It doesn't actively show what the real gap is necessarily. All right, Holgerson is going to close the gap down a little bit more on Lidman, who is just down in this rock garden, so long as Holgerson gets through cleanly. This is uh, quite the interesting battle for second place between a couple of the Swedes. Holgerson got held up, though. That's going to cost him some time. Now he goes for the double. Don't go down just like Lidman did. Lidman off the side of the track up the road. So Holgerson, let's see what the gap goes down. Ah, 36. This is exactly where Lidman was down, so I don't think he actually gained any time. May have been down himself, but look at him. He's cruising through here pretty good. Nicely done, Holgerson. Finding the smooth lines. Just gained five seconds right there alone. And now we come to the big rock hill. Seems like Lidman might be a little bit better in the rocks, and Holgerson's better in kind of the switchbacks, flowy stuff of the track. But Holgerson just got up that hill really cleanly and just gained, he basically just gained 10 seconds without crashing. So nice move there. 200 second gap. Now 219 second gap. So Ethan Parks is soon to check in with another lap through here. Let's see. Uh, oh, Lidman just went down again. Wow, so Matias Lidman, this is this battle for second place is absolutely on. It is now under 10 seconds. Watch as timing gates are going to refresh here in just a second. Uh, Holgerson's making a bit of a mockery of that right there. But yeah, 9.1. So battle for second is on. Matias Lidman starting to feel the pressure. So he, I don't know if he tried to up the ante to do what he could to close down on parks or what, but... It is uh, now turned into a situation where Holgerson is the one that is catching him, and Lidman has to do a little bit of scrambling. He's gotten a, a little bit more of a gap now of late, but look at Holgerson up this uphill really cleanly. And I think just gained some of that time back. Yeah, another half second gained right there. I mean, what this really boils down to, though, is who's not going to crash. So it's not so much of as well as Holgerson is riding as much as it's Lidman crashing back to him. And Lidman just made another mistake a little sideways. That, I mean, you can see each of them on the screen now as Lidman is going up the stair steps. This is such a gnarly section. Watch this from Holgerson's point of view. 
Just up. It's like the staircase at Belle Puig in Spain. Still 11 seconds to gap. But uh, you're starting to see both of them pretty close to each other. All right, Parks is going to come up to his next lapped rider here shortly. I want to go back and find Danny Thierry because he's about to get caught by our guys there. There's Danny Thierry underneath this log section. And those guys, I don't actually know where they are on the track, but they'll they'll be to him soon. So uh, Paul Brunet got around Seth Carr and Frank Jackson. He is now 28th. He will move up to 27th around Jay Turner, uh, but it's going to be a little bit because Turner was already on lap four. These, everyone's already finished three laps. Uh, or excuse me, everyone's finished two laps now except Brune and Danny Thierry of the riders that are still circulating at least. I'm trying to figure out how far back. Oh, there goes Parks the opposite direction of Danny Thierry. I guess it's still going to be a little while before those guys get to him. This is, this is quite interesting to see how this is going to unfold, though. Olgerson has come from pretty far back to get within 10 seconds in a battle for second place. Jumping in the ruts right there. Man, really clean right there. I thought he was going to get kicked a little bit sideways with how he sent it into that section. Beautiful through there. Down to about six seconds back. And look, it has to be gaining through here. He's going so well through here. Five seconds back. Really clean through there. Right in the very edge of the rocks. But actually, Lidman opened it back up through that section. So Matthias Lidman finding a little bit of power. And with no real battle for the lead, I mean, this is what we got. This is more or less the battle to watch is this one. All right, these guys are coming to this little tunnel section here now, so they will be closing up shortly onto Danny Thierry, who I think is now around Carr and Jackson. We'll go back and find him in a little bit. But, yeah, he just went through this section a couple minutes ago, remember? So they're going to be on the backside of him shortly. 11 seconds is the gap. Holgerson was held up a little bit. He's trying to close it back down. And our leader, Ethan Parks, just went down as he's coming to the white flag. He does a 30-44. That would have been his best lap. He would have probably gone 30-44. But uh, the the consistency, uh, man, I almost want to see post-race the consistency on this because it's literally, this is a 30-minute lap time. The consistency, the standard deviation in his lap time is like a 1.5 right now. That's insane. He did a 30-45, a 30-42, and out of a 30-44. He would have done a 30-35-ish or so. But he crashed and checks in with the white flag. One more lap to go for our leader with a four-minute lead. Or just about four-minute lead, I should say. Oh, man, Lidman getting hopped around through here a little bit. Oh, and he almost went down. Algerson got held up. So they're going to go around. That is Frank Jackson, who is disconnected right there. We already saw uh, Thierry up the road a little bit. This battle just continues to... You think it's going to materialize, and then Holgerson makes a mistake, and then suddenly it's close again because another mistake out of Lidman, and they just kind of keep going back and forth with this. seconds is the gap though and Holgerson pretty good in these sections Lidman is down Lidman is down in second place and the exchange we were waiting for for quite literally an hour of this race 
pretty much since the second lap began. We're waiting to see if Holgerson and the speed he was carrying could catch Matthias Lidman. He has got to him. He is around him now. And the question is, can Lidman respond? These guys are 160 seconds ahead of Josh Collins. So it is really between the two of them to settle out second place. Unless Ethan Parks basically dies out front. Uh, they're not going to catch him. Parks is on his way to winning this thing. But this battle for second is still hot and heavy. Lidman doesn't look happy to be content with this second place result here today. He's going to cross over. He's going to be right on Holgerson. Holgerson lays it down. Lidman back through in a second. Split lines through here. Holgerson immediately back on the charge and almost pulls up even with them into this corner. This is a pretty fancy little battle we got going on here. Look at this. Way outside for Holgerson, just carrying momentum as tripling through. And Holgerson, it is going to work. He sticks the inside line to make the pass on Lidman again. So Holgerson and Lidman, frantic battle for second place here on the third lap. Oh, Holgerson, a mistake. Lidman in the rock garden goes by. Oh, and then he goes over the bars. Just when he makes a pass back and finally had a little bit of clean room, he lays it over the bars and has to go back to the drawing board. They just can't quite figure it out. Who wants this second spot? So where is Danny Thierry is actually coming back towards them. He's about to go on the main straight right now. There he is right there. So these guys are catching Danny Thierry, the hero of the race who is now top 30. I want to see what his lap time is. He did a 50-something the first time by 50.08. So second lap through, second full lap completed. 45.31. He's getting better. Almost uh, five minutes better on the second lap for Danny Thierry. He's still going. 29th place now. We are absolutely chuffed for him. As uh, next up will be Jay Turner. Looks like uh, Paul Burnett just got by him. Cohen Mote has called it a race. He was uh, just outside the top 20. Anybody else out of the race just yet? Looks like these guys all holding steady. Anybody inside of the top 30 now I feel like wants to finish this thing. They've made it this far. If you've made it to this deep in lap three, you should just keep going, honestly. So Danny Thierry gets the blue flag. There goes the 503 of Holgerson. Thierry was just trying to move out of the way and Holgerson went right by. He is going to stay on the side of the track. Is he going to wait for Matthias Lidman to go? I think he is. Yep, here comes Matthias Lidman. Hopping through. And Danny Thierry, the Sportsmanship Award as well. Just wants to finish the Gotland Grand National. Let's the third, second and third place riders go by. And continues on his way. Cat's not jumping in the chat. Wants to know if any more of these rounds are happening soon. This is a one-round deal. Uh, the Gotland Grand National is a real Swedish enduro race. Uh, Matthias Lindman does host other enduro races, though. I think he hosts the... He's part of the people that host the Enduro Palais de l'Etuque beach race. Um, but I don't know when that is. I think it's usually like March or something like that. So th there's plenty of time to see some more. So Danny Thierry continues on. Let's see if he'll get around Jay Turner. He should also get to Cohen Moat. He's only going to finish one more lap. He's on the fourth lap now. Ethan Parks will obviously finish the race before he gets to the flag again, so then he'll check in and only have finished that fourth lap. Uh, Paul Brunet, where is he? Has he gotten passed by Ethan Parks yet? I don't think so. I think Parks... Uh, yeah, it's tough to keep track of where these guys are. Let's go... A little bit forward here. So we got Brandon Huntington. And uh, is he? Yeah, he is not too far behind Oakley Kettle as they continue a nice little battle for 24th place. Ben Sullivan also just up the road. Ah, no, pretty far up the road, I should say. Sullivan is right behind Tobias Schitz, though. And then Xander uh, Vossebeld has almost worked his way into the top 20 just by continuing at it, not uh, giving up. Thomas uh, Lavillaroy has worked his way into 20th. You can see the gaps on the pit board, bottom left of your screen, are massive between these guys. Teo Tesseron, 134 seconds behind Jez Titley. Jez Titley, though, only 10 seconds back. Uh, we got ahead of him, David Bradley. 
So David Bradley on the 92 machine. Working his way through the rock garden right there. Only 18 seconds back of John Mushy. But it's Jez Titley behind him who's trying to work his way forward. Oh, went for the gap and almost went down. Tidley actually closing up here on David Bradley. There's a, a view of the gaps. These guys. Pretty cool perspective to see just straight on. Oh, Bradley. Big swap. Diddly and down he goes. Jez Titley says, thank you very much. I'll go right on by. Just hopping through the bumps. And Bradley gets up. You can still see him on the screen. A whole position change in a crash, and you can still see both of them. So Titley and Bradley continue on in their battle. Great little perspective seeing those guys go by. Teo Tesserone. There's John Mushy, Rico DeLat. Devin Davis just got over that big rock garden in the back section. So he is about probably 20 minutes away from the uh, finish of his next lap. Anton Carlson, Louis Modart, and Nate Van Totten of coming through here at the top. Ryan Neal. Mozart, Taj Dixon is down in the eighth spot. Bodie Parker in seventh, about a minute back of Jack Gatlin. Gatlin is reeling in, or Reno Brennan actually, I should say, just got around Gatlin. Brennan was behind him. Brennan got around him. Now he goes down. Here comes Jack Gatlin. And Jack Gatlin is going to go by Reno Brennan back into fifth. So doesn't matter if we are an hour, we're 101 minutes into this race, which means we are an hour and 41 minutes in. Doesn't matter how deep we are. The battles are still continuing. This is how close it is right now for fifth place on the track. Jack Gatland and Reno Brennan, who thankfully I have both of their skins. Good to see two guys whose skins we actually have as they tiptoe through the rocks and it gets all wonky. Oh, oh, Brennan around the outside trying to fight back by as they go through. We're going to see him come back on the main straightaway here shortly. And this battle for fifth is frantic, man. Look at this. Gatlin just trying to stay ahead. And then Brennan on a 450. Oh, Gatlin swings wide. Brennan cuts low, makes the pass stick. And right before we get back onto the start finish straight right here. And while he's on a 450, he's going to sprint away. Down this straightaway they go, right to the edge of the track, on the rear fender, and Brennan will hold on to fifth place as we check in onto the final lap for these guys. So fifth and sixth now coming across the line. A-OK -okay through there. So Josh Collins, how far up the road is he of them? 197 seconds. And then still Holgerson and Lidman. Lidman got back around Holgerson into second place. So Lidman, not done just yet. 266 seconds behind Ethan Parks. That is uh, 4 minutes and 20 seconds. Hey, oh, 4 minutes, 26 seconds. Unbelievable what Ethan Parks is doing out here on this race course. Has he gotten around Brunei yet? I think he has. There is Brunei. Let's go way back. Danny Thierry, 28th. Going to get Cohen Moat here pretty soon. And Brunei is... Where are we at on the track? Yes, he has gotten around Paul Brunei. So Paul Brunei has been put a lap down. Next up for Parks will be Brandon Huntington, I believe. I think he'll get to him. It's going to be really curious to see who gets all four laps in because I think a lot of these guys that we're seeing, like Teo Tesseron, might make it. Thomas Levilleroy probably won. I think Parks will probably lap him. A lap of Vossabeld too. Actually, where is Parks? Like, how far up is he on this track now? Is that the wall? Forget, is that before the back straightaway? Wide open one. <laughs> Goodness gracious, these guys still continuing their battle six seconds apart. Oh man, Lidman got stuck at the top of the hill a little bit and Holgerson is 
<laughs> Smelling some blood in the water as he goes down. Where's the camera switch at? Lidman and Holgerson. Hopefully Holgerson didn't miss the timing gate. He did not. Okay. The Lidman weaving his way through here. Little log section jumping back down the hill. Oh, down he goes. Here comes Holgerson. This is Holgerson's opportunity. So long as he doesn't crash it away, he's going to really tiptoe down. Oh, he pushes wide, but he does hold the spot. So Holgerson, that's our change for second place again right there. As they go up into this hefty rock garden, Holgerson gets kicked sideways. Lidman stuck on his rear tire. Folks, we are an hour and 45 minutes into the race, and it's still that close for second place. See where one is better than the other. We just went through a couple different types of sections. Now we got the rock garden. Maybe Lidman a little bit better through here. We're both going to swivel to the right. Avoid going over that rocky hill. It's just like right next to each other. Still two seconds apart. Oh, Holgerson hung up. They're going to be bar to bar coming out of this corner. Holgerson holds it. This is what it is, man. Ethan Parks makes this race feel like it's a boring one, but this is how close it is for second. This would be your battle for the win if Ethan Parks was having a rough day. But he's so far out in front that it looks like these guys are just struggling, but in real reality, they're riding so well. They're still 145 seconds ahead of fourth place and just having a great battle it has been going on for the last 20 minutes now at this point 20 30 minutes that these guys have just been basically 10 seconds apart someone crashes they pass the other then it goes back and forth another rock garden right here Lidman they're coming up on a lapped rider it sounds like as well yes they are a lapped rider I think that is uh, Brunei right there 654 ride, I think, is Brunei. It's going to try to get out of their way. Let's see if he does. This might hold up Holgerson just a little bit. Oh, Brunei down. Holgerson able to get by. And Lidman also gets by. So, yeah, Brunei now in the 26th spot. Oh, Holgerson hung up on a rock. And Lidman goes by him as well into the two spot again. This is far from over. Look at Holgerson hopping that log really well. Oh, front end tuck. That'll cost them some time right there. Lidman hopping over right there. So they've gotten around Brunei. Parks is now into some more lap traffic. That's the 9 machine. The 9 and the 433 here. Across the top of your screen right now is all guys that have not finished this race. They are DNFs. And Parks is just like, what is going on here? I'm just trying to get around these guys. Please stop arguing with each other. I think those guys are actually battling each other. And what place is that? That is Oakley Kettle and Brandon Huntington. And then uh, Ben Sullivan is up the road quite a ways from those guys. So we've now had uh, 24th place Huntington be lapped. And I don't think anybody else in front of them is DNF'd. Yes, so these guys are still going strong. You know, Brennan... And Jack Gatlin's still pretty close together. Only 10 seconds between uh, Van Tottenham and Mozart. So Van Tottenham has moved into the top 10, and he wants some more. He's bringing Ryan Neal with him. This is actually a pretty tight little battle 
9, 10, 11. It's only about 17 seconds between them. And mind you, that's after an hour and 50 minutes of racing. Ooh, Taj Dixon just went down. So how many people are on lap five now? We have 11 people about to be 12 on the fifth lap. So that is, a, it's a four lap race, but the first lap doesn't count. So this is the final lap for Lois Madard. He's made it. Anton Carlson also doing swell. And Devin Davis just lost a bit of time to Carlson, but still holding strong in 14th. Rico Delat. John Mushy. I think all these guys should make it to the flag before Parks gets them. Oh, Titley just got land or landed on Bradley. And these guys are still going at it. This is uh, 17th and 18th. They're as close as Holgerson and Lidman as Titley then goes over the bars and Bradley gets them right back. They're way ahead of Teo Tesseron and uh, Thomas of Villaroy here in 20th working his way up the hill. Xander Vossebeld. See riders from all different spots of the track. I mean, those guys are like 20 minutes behind on a different section of the track, and you can see them. It looks like they're right next to each other. Uh, Tobias Schitt's still in 22nd, and then Ben Sullivan in 23rd. So Parks is already... He's coming to this next section of the track. He's going to be on the home stretch, the final 15 minutes of this track here pretty soon. So it looks like... Total race time for him will probably be in the area of two hours and five minutes, two hours and ten minutes or so. I mean, he has been extremely efficient. The lap times have been really consistent. And uh, only trouble he's really had of late, it seems, is lap traffic getting through those guys, but made it through them pretty cleanly. Yeah, now coming down this straightaway. So this will put him on the uh, second half of the track, basically. He's now gone past from the south to the north side and literally crashing as he does so. So Lidman still second. Ten seconds back is Holgerson. I mean, you can just keep seeing them on the same screen together pretty much. And then a really quiet, solid day for Josh Collins. We haven't talked too much about him on the 242. But uh, he is... Like I said, about the loneliest his race could get right now is where he's at. 178 seconds behind Jacob Holgerson, 174 seconds ahead of Jack Gatland. It is a lonely pole for him right now. Uh, Reno Brennan is still just about 14, 15 seconds behind Gatlin, so that could still switch at the flag for our top five positions, and that would be obviously a huge dub for either one of them. Bodie Parker going over the bars. He started to reel in Brennan a little bit. Not going to catch him, obviously. He's got a massive gap back to Taj Dixon, who's 188 seconds back in eighth. And then here is this crazy battle still going on. Nate Van Tottenham has just gotten around Mozart for ninth. So Van Tottenham running a 33.56 really on his horse of late. Has moved into ninth spot. And Mozart doesn't look like he's ready to be done with that position just yet. Oh, a off kilter for Van Tottenham, and Mozart takes advantage to go by. Oh, Van Tottenham absolutely ripped into that rut. He's like, I just spent all that time getting to him. I don't want to let him go. 22 seconds back for Ryan Neal. Uh, Lois Modard pretty far back. Anton Carlson, Devin Davis. So everyone's like kind of in their own little sections right now, but this battle continues for ninth. Oh, Van Tottenham lands on his rear tire and gets a little bit hung up. So now Mozart on his way up the road. Oh, here comes Van Tottenham right back, though. And muscles by just says, forget about it, dude. I'm not waiting anymore. I'm going right through. And now Mozart, he's going to try to split lines and go down the right side of the track right here. Oh, Van Tottenham with a huge crash. And Mozart also went down. He did not fall off the bike. <laughs> the battles are intense on the final lap. And Van Tottenham is probably thinking to himself, what the heck? I finally make the pass. He passes me back. I fly back by him. Then I crash again. Nothing is working right now for Van Tottenham to make that pass stick for ninth. 
But uh, certainly love the send here on the final lap for these guys. All right, let's go back and take a look. Has anybody else not finished this race here? Looks like Cohen Moat was the last guy. Uh, Jay Turner, 29th. So Danny Thierry is up into 27th. Oh, no. Oh, okay, I was just was hoping he didn't disconnect right there. I want to see this man finish. And uh, <laughs> Teo Tesseron, who's in the race. I want to do four laps. Who was the guy that said this? Jay Turner was stoked on it, but uh, not stoked on doing four laps. I don't know, man. It's an enduro race. You can't expect it to just be an hour. Like, come on. I actually respect it. I respect everything about the way that Lidman has uh, chose to do this and do this race. So Oakley Kettle, Brandon Huntington have been put a lap down it looks like ethan parks just went around ben sullivan yes he did so sullivan is now a lap down he will not finish another lap uh looks like tobias Schitz might end up getting lapped as well based on their uh, current positioning and xander vosseveld it'll it'll be close we'll see how far parks makes it all right anybody else ryan neal and Tottenham still going at it with Mozart. <laughs> they just keep crashing as well. Oh, he thought about it. Really sent it back down the inside right there. But there's two different ways of approach right here. Van Tottenham is kind of sending it. Mozart really methodically going through stuff slower. Oh, Van Tottenham, if that rock wasn't there, I think he was going to go for it. I love this, man. I love that they're still this close. Look at this little on-off section. Van Tottenham going to go to the inside line. Mozart crosses back over. But Van Tottenham makes it stick, or does he? Look at Mozart. He is not giving up. Going to the inside. Thought about an aggressive block pass. Thinks better of it. Ryan Neal's only 10 seconds back of these guys because they've been messing with each other so much. So while it is a battle for ninth, they, one of these guys might not even end up in the top 10 if they continue going at it like this. Finishing top 10 at the Gotland Grand National is one of those things that these guys really want. Look at Mozart. Oh, he thought about sending it down there. That's a great little fight between these guys here. Really cool to see the different lines coming together, the way things are going. Oh, Mozart down. That's going to be Ryan Neal closing up. We'll see an opportunity to get right up on Mozart and maybe sneak into the top 10 at the end of this race. You can now see the number 10 machine up the road. Oh, that's part of the track is brutal. Really sneaky good line right there by Ryan Neal kind of splitting a few rocks and hopping off a bigger one. So this battle remains to be decided. And look at this. Lidman and Holgerson have switched again. Holgerson back in front of Lidman. They're still on the first uh, half of the racetrack here as Ethan Parks is only a few minutes away from stamping authority with this victory as the battle for second still rages on. These guys just cannot get away from each other. This is one of the most difficult sections of the track right here too. This rock garden in the water coming up. So who navigates it best? We're watching from Lidman. He's going to cross over and think of a different option than Holgerson. You can see Holgerson really methodically kind of weaving through. Lidman was going a little bit more sendy, it seemed. And it's starting to bite him. Front end knifing through a little bit. Still getting stuck on some stuff. And now lays it down in the water. And Holgerson is going to open a big gap. So Lidman tried to go aggressive and it did not work. We'll see how this one fares in the final 15 minutes for these guys. They still have a ways to go. They are now almost six minutes behind. Yeah, almost six minutes behind Ethan Parks, who is on his way to winning this thing here in just a few moments. 
Will he go sub 30 on the last lap? This has been a really solid last lap for him. Still has a ways to go. And we are coming up to the 20 minute mark here shortly. Or the 20 minute mark, the two hour mark, I should say. I'm so used to saying minutes. Hours feels like a long time. Because it is, man. Ethan Parks has been absolutely grinding this racetrack for a very long portion of this one. And he is coming up to lap. That is the eight machine on the Wild Side Designs program. Let's see who that is. Just put uh, Tobias Schitt's a lap down. So, yes. I think uh, Xander Vossebeld might be safe, although he just went down. Tobias Schitz will be the second rider to finish the race, but uh, obviously he'll be in 22nd place. So now it's just a bit of a glory ride for Ethan Parks, who is watching a six-minute advantage just continue to roll. Just cruising his way through. I mean, you, you have to say that he was the class of the field today. The lap times were ultra consistent. And you can see even just in the riding, just confidence going wherever he needs, putting the bike in places it needs to go. Taking his time as well. That, it's always so critical on these racetracks. You think, oh, I'm in an open section now. Let's really send it. And then you're like, no, nope, here comes another corner. You got to settle it back down. Not get too far ahead of yourself. He is about to lap. Somebody else, who is this? He's coming up to lap. There's no way that's uh, Vossabelt or whatever his name is already, is it? It is. Wow, I thought Xander Vossabelt was going to be way gone. Tobias Schitz closed the gap well down on Xander Vossabelt. So Vossabelt is not going to finish all four laps, I think. He might actually let Parks go so he doesn't have to do another lap. We'll see. But Parks coming through the inside line right here is going to put 21st place a lap down. And that should be it. Yes, because Thomas Leva uh, Levilleroy has already started the final lap of the race. So uh, Xander Vossabeld will finish this one no better than 21st place now. That is pretty much a guarantee unless Parks lets him go. And look at these two still six tenths in it. I want to watch Parks come across the finish line, but this battle just... Oh, Lindman just went down. So this is the joyride for Ethan Parks here. Final few segments. We are two hours into the Gotland Grand National, and Ethan Parks is about to claim the win in this one. To uh, check something out real quick. So this event has gone on since 2017 and every single year since it began a rider not a rider from Europe I should say has won it. It has been uh, three Swedes, four with three Swedes, four different winners from Sweden and uh, one Frenchman. Matthias Lidman has won this race twice, 2017 and 2022. Matthias Havi won it in 2018, Holgerson won it in 2019, and Nathan Prynne won it in 2020. But for the first time, an American will stand atop the Gotland Grand National. Ethan Parks wheelies his way down the straightaway for the final time. Ekman Productions SYS Racing brings it home. Ethan Parks wins the 2023 Gotland Grand National. A 30-25 on the last lap. Resets the fastest lap and two hours, two hours and three minutes is what it took to get it done for Ethan Parks here today. Wow, what a ride for Ethan. Tremendous job getting it done. We'll see if uh, we'll see if he joins up in Discord and, and maybe we'll give get a chat with him uh, in a little bit. Uh, but I uh, do want to try to follow home do want to follow home this battle between Lidman and Holgerson. So we're going to hold off on chatting with him for just a minute here. Quick shout out to Adam, Adam's all time low and I Bradley 205. Thank you guys for the follow here right at the end. I want to see this battle for second place as it comes to a close. Holgerson just went down. Here comes Lidman. It is going to be nose to tail as they go through this rock section. They still have about five minutes left of this race. 
based on the gap that uh, they had to get to Parks. Parks is going to win this thing by over six minutes when it comes down to it. Dominant race victory. But I want to watch the end of this battle, so we'll get to Ethan Parks in just a minute, your race winner. He says he is up for chatting. We'll just see the end of this battle real quick. Right, back into the action, Holgerson. Oh, Lidman lays it down. Holgerson squeezes through the gap to get back by. Split options. It's going to come back together, and it's still Holgerson. My goodness. Two former winners of this race will not win the crown this year, but they are giving us everything we can handle to watch this battle. Oh, this is so tricky, this drop down right here. Both of them play it pretty safe. Holgerson messes up, though, and Lidman pounces back by. Now, here they come through this long section into the rock garden. Lidman got to be careful. Holgerson kind of sent it a little bit. Holgerson, big rock right there, and then a really big rock garden right here. Holgerson kind of taking the long way home, cuts back across. Pretty good drive, but Lidman is able to just get through it in time. And now we're watching them coming around the side of this hillside together. Oh, Holgerson down! And is that the end of the battle? Well, as many times as we've said that today, it just continued to go on and on and on. It's like unofficially, uh, Vossabeld will end up in 21st. And the 8 machine in 22nd. We got to see... Oh, and now Lindman goes down! So again... Holgerson's going to get another opportunity. Lindman could have just cruised at home most likely from there, and he's going to get up, and they're still going to be battling. As they come weaving in and out of the trees right here. Oh, Lindman hung up on that inside right. Holgerson is right on him. Intense battle for second down to the flag here at the 2023 Grotland Grand National. Holgerson down, or uh, Lindman down on the outside. Holgerson down the inside, going to make the pass back. But it just continues to go back and forth. It just who is going to win this thing for this battle for second place? I have no idea. As they come over this hill, both of them nearly appearing at the same time, and we're going to get the 433. That's Oakley Kettle split lines through here. Starting to not be able to see these guys. We might switch to a different camera view. So Oakley Kettle going a lap down behind these guys. Only four riders have even finished this race. And it's been a long time since Parks finished it. We're still waiting for second. Oakley Kettle blocks Holgerson. That allows Matthias Lindman to come up right behind him as they go through the split line. And Oakley Kettle is not letting either of these guys really go through just yet. And oh, and Holgerson front end tucking down. Oh my goodness. Now Lindman takes advantage to go back by. And he's going to have to deal with trying to get around Oakley Kettle. Oh, Lindman is hung up. Is he down? He is down. A front end tuck for him as well. And Holgerson goes back by. They still have not gotten around Oakley Kettle, who is down in the logs. Finally, they uh, disposed of him. At least Holgerson has... Lidman is in send mode. He's trying to get back to Holgerson. Got through those logs and rocks beautifully. Using every trick in the book here on the final lap to get back to him. They have only got three more corners to go. <laughs> this battle it honestly might even come down to penalties. Holgerson got to get this corner cleanly right here. Spun it around really well. Lidman is going to be right on him. Will he try to send Holgerson onto the straightaway for second place? And it looks like Lidman is not going to get to him. One more corner to go. Jacob Holgerson survives to outlast Matthias Lidman for second place in this race. Lidman crosses the line only about four seconds back of him. 4.07 was the gap at the flag. That was an unbelievable finish for second and third. I want to give a shout out to our other finishers we've seen cross the line so far. Uh, 21st place, Xander Vossabeld came across 
Uh, the first rider, a lap down. Tobias Schitz ends up in 22nd. Ben Sullivan, 23rd. Brandon Huntington will end up in 24th. Oakley Kettle, who we saw there battling with those guys a little bit, will get 25th, so good job for him. He finishes this one in the 25 spot, and we'll wait for Paul Brunet in 26th. Then Danny Thierry, everyone's people's champ in a minute. Let's go back to fourth place. See how he finishes up there, Josh Collins, and give Ethan Parks, our race winner, a call. So dialing up Ethan Parks right now, and we have the winner of the 2023 Gauntlet Grand National on the line. Congratulations, Ethan Parks. What a ride. This has to feel incredible. Oh, maybe we don't got him. He did answer the call, but he's not speaking. We'll see if we can... Hello? What? Hello? What I heard you for a second. Oh, he's gone. He's back. Can I hear you? Uh, you hear me. I heard you now. I don't know why my mic wasn't detecting there. All right, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, yeah. How's it feel, man? This was a wild two-hour affair, and you come out on top. Take us through it. Mentally exhausting, like, no joke. After the second lap, I my, my eyes, they weren't going dry, but it's like, going blurry because you're just staring at the screen <laughs> like trying to <laughs> hit these ruts without dying every corner yeah uh, but no it was fun it was fun um josh and i we were having a pretty sick battle and with frank there uh for the first quarter of the lap but then all of a sudden i looked down i was 50 seconds in the lead i'm like what happened so <laughs> and i see josh still hasn't finished so he's still racing so i thought he got disconnected or something because usually he's He's out here winning these things, so I don't know what happened to him there. Yeah, he uh, he ran into a couple problems on the second and third lap and was crashing a lot, and uh, Holgerson and Lindman kind of checked out from him. But, yeah, like take us back to, I guess, the beginning of the race there. You're in a frantic fight. You Really, the three of you were getting away from everybody pretty quickly. Uh, but, uh, you know, what was kind of your mindset being in the battle that early on? You know it's a long race, but it was also pretty intense. Like, did you want to get away from them did you mind being in a battle what was it like so i don't know if you saw me on the start but i kind of slid out going uh i don't know how many corners into it and then i got landed on and i somehow landed out of the front flip while getting landed on and i'm like oh my god <laughs> i just got blessed and then going down the start uh, another start straight i dipped the front wheel into a hole and did this biggest front flip of my entire life and still run, ran out of that and i was like no way i just survived two that two times in a row <laughs> so i was kind of like a little bit like shooken up there i'm like i need to make up time and i know it's like a two-hour race but for some reason mentally i was i was like i need to get up there so i was pushing really hard the first um quarter of a lap there and not gonna lie i was making some bonehead moves and my hands were kind of cold so i couldn't really feel my fingers <laughs> there so i don't know a after that um I, I was ready for a battle between frank and josh and frank made the mistake and and then uh i, I do have josh skins i noticed that you don't have the other bird moto skins which is unfortunate but so i know who was who out there and um yeah i was, I was getting ready to battle josh there and i think he made a couple mistakes and i saw that i had a 15 to 20 second lead and then a few corners later I, I i thought i missed a timing gate because the timing wasn't updating and then uh and then all of a sudden i saw it was a 51 second lead so i'm like okay don't know <laughs> what happened but i'll just i'll just settle in now and that's kind of what i did i kind of calmed down a little bit i was kind of doing stupid stuff for the first half of the lap but then once i kind of got in the flow of things i just i just kept going i I, I felt really good into there, and I was just trying really hard not to crash, and just saw that lead just going up and up and up. And then after I saw it go over 100 seconds, I'm like, all right, I can just, I could just take this home. Honestly, I had no pressure, and and it's all worked out. So I think by the end of the second lap, I believe you were already three minutes ahead of them. Uh, Obviously, at that point, you got to start imagining a little bit when is on the cards, and you know, settle in and just and just ride. Did you let yourself think about the fact that you're going to win this race at all, or did you just try to moto and not think about it at all? What was it like? 
Honestly, after I saw that big lead, I I kind of knew I would really have to throw it away to lose. I did not think those guys were going to catch up just straight, straight up speed-wise, so I knew if I did not crash, um, I would be fine. So then I started to kind of like see, just play a little game, see how fast of a lap time I can get. And then obviously that last lap, even though I got held up by a couple lappers there, they were not moving at all. And I had some pretty big crashes. <laughs> I still managed to get a, a 30.25. So I was like, all right, I'll take it. <laughs> but I was trying to play a little game, see if I could get under 30 minutes. But obviously that's that takes so much concentration. And you had to really baby the bike to make sure you're not dying and sending big lines and yeah, well, we were remarking uh, quite a bit about the lap times, the consistency. I know you crashed right before the finish on the fourth lap. And, yeah, uh, I was like, and, yeah, let's go. This is going to be a PB, and then I slid out immediately. I know. <laughs> but then you still ran. You ran a 30-44, so you went 30-45, 30-42, 30-44. So your consistency was unbelievable uh, by that point. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess just uh, talk us through a little bit the, the mentality switch and and what it takes, I guess, to not make mistakes, not get over your head. Because we saw it. We watched a lot of battles. Guys are yeah. starting to send it a little bit harder to try to make a pass and things like that. Yep. Um, so just take us through the mentality of like, hey, slow down, got a big lead, and uh, hitting your marks. Yeah, yeah. Definitely the the start there for the first quarter of lap, I was definitely overriding. I, I, I literally – so there was a part of the single track part – kind of before you go out into the field I was just kind of trying to double some things and then I really shouldn't have and I I died and I literally told myself I'm like all right calm down it's literally a two-hour race and uh, that's when uh, Josh was still on me so and, and then uh, like I said after I saw the, the the lead go way up that's when I completely calmed down and just 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 kept going I I, I I kind of grinded this track a little bit and just kind of <laughs> figured out what's a good uh, what's a good pace. Not doing sun lines, and because obviously there's some massive lines you can do, but just doing whatever is fast enough to not die. Yeah. So we, I, I also I brought this up a few times. It seemed like, especially on the first lap, you could kind of tell that Frank maybe didn't play the track that much. Uh, he yeah. was slowing down in some fast sections, and then he would jump over some stuff. Uh, so I theorized early on that you were one of the few guys that really did kind of pre-run this track and see it out and didn't play the prologue that much. I assume that that's the reality then. You spent more time on this one than the prologue? Yeah, when, when the, this track came out, I believe, on Wednesday, and I hopped on it on Thursday, and then I just had some free time just due to the holiday. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to sit here, throw on some podcasts, and just run some laps. <laughs> because I, I've said this before, and Daryl is probably one of my favorite things in this game, so I can actually just sit down for a long time and just do laps, and I have to be careful or else I end up doing it way too much. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, uh, so you, we brought it up right at the end. You end up being the first American to win this race. It was kind of dominated oh, really? by the Swedes a little bit, and Nathan Prynne was able to win it in 2020. Um, yeah, I guess kind of just tell me what it means to you, what this winning this race means to you and, and kind of where it ranks in, in the sim career a little bit? Um, obviously, it's not... People don't take it as seriously as the RF stuff, but in my own opinion, this is probably one of my favorite races to do in uh, sim, and I, I just always love Libman's tracks when it comes out, so I'm so glad he always puts these out. So to me, it's very important. I was actually... You could ask Alex. I don't know if he's still in chat, but I was telling him, like, dude... I want to win this year. I know uh, <laughs> a lot of people don't take it too seriously, but I like to take it seriously in my own opinion. And, yeah. And I, I, I've always, I've always loved enduro, and I've always wanted to win this race in particular. I came close last year; only finished 15 seconds off of mid last year, and then, uh, and then this year, I guess the extra time just putting more laps into anybody else. I'm, I'm sure. If Josh put more time in here, he could have probably be straight up because last year when we were doing the Enduro races, he was, he, he was the guy beating everybody by 100 seconds. So, wow. Um, but yeah, it, it means a lot to me. I, I'm, I'm proud of myself for <laughs> not uh, mentally exploding there at the beginning because I was pushing way too hard and I need to be that early on. So. Hell yeah. Well, congrats, man. That's sick. That was a. Uh... 
really fun race to watch. You made it look way easier than it is for sure. And uh, congratulations I felt as like well. I made it boring because there's nobody near me. I'm like, oh, I'm battling nobody. Oh, Hopefully don't worry, Holgerson. Holgerson and Lindman made it really entertaining for second. We yeah, watched you basically that. the entire <laughs> second lap, but after that, they were just on each other the entire race. So yeah, yeah, good fun. But uh, congrats, man. We'll send you on your way. Go uh, celebrate. Take a break. Take the, yeah, the hands off the I'm sticks gonna, for like, a little bit. <laughs> literally go walk around because I haven't sat down for this long of focus this hard in a very long time. So I need to go walk around. <laughs> oh, man. Incredible. Yeah. Congratulations and uh, have a good day, dude. Thank you. You as well. All right. That was race winner of the 2023 Gotland Grand National, Ethan Parks, getting it done. A 344 second victory massive winning margin that is almost seven minutes that he won this race by six minutes and 44 seconds to be exact I want to give a shout out to a couple other guys uh, we saw the front three finish this race uh, Josh Collins was able to come across in fourth we watched him finish there in the fourth position uh, 221 seconds back of the uh, number one machine of Matthias Lidman I was confused there why it said 594 for a second but Ends up fourth in this one. You heard Ethan talking about Collins being one of the guys that is always uh, really strong in these enduro races and was really good early in the race. Had a couple issues on the second and third laps, but still ends up a strong fourth. Jack Gadlin, I think he finished fifth last year, finishes fifth again on the JH Yamaha, the number five machine. Solid last lap there, 33-15, so it was getting better towards the end. Ends up in the top five. Reno Brennan was close to him in fifth for a long time. Ends up in sixth. Was pretty far back by the flag. Almost actually fell to the clutches of Bodie Parker, who ended up in seventh. So congrats to Parker. And Taj Dixon crosses the line right now in eighth. So a really strong run for Dixon of the Empire Machine. Number 21. So I think he finished 21st last year. Ends up in the eighth spot this year. Nate Van Todnov and Mozart were going at it for the nine spot forever. And they have now finally split up from each other just a little bit there's a lapped rider that is about to finish in front of him by the looks of it want to give a shout out to him if we can see who it is it is not i apologize i misread that i thought i saw someone just ahead of him so i'll go back up to nate van tottenham who's coming across the line in ninth the ninth place for nathan van tottenham and we'll check out mozart crossing in a little bit let's go back to our uh, lapped riders another rider that crossed the finish line that we missed uh, Brandon Huntington, Oakley Kettle finish. We're still waiting for Paul Brunet and Danny Thierry to cross the line. So Danny Thierry looks like he'll get 27th. Actually is getting close to Paul Brunet. So Brunet and Thierry, who are going to end up 850 seconds behind Oakley Kettle. 850 seconds. That is, uh, good Lord. 10 minutes is 600 seconds. And you add another 300 to that. That would be almost 15 minutes. Just about 15 minutes behind is where they'll end up finishing. And just as Brunei went down, Thierry goes down. So who is going to finish next? Looks like actually it'll be our 10th place finisher coming next. Mozart coming on to the start straight right here. And he is just cruising it home. Another 10th place finish for Mozart. Want to make sure we get everyone there due who is going to cross the finish line here today. And thank you, uh, Seth Shirley, for the, uh, the hydrate. I did hydrate in the middle of that interview there with Ethan Parks. Mozart crosses the line. He will be inside the top 10. Ryan Neal still coming down there. He is just in front of Thierry, I think, Danny Thierry. So let's see. Let's actually go back to the 26th spot of Brunard. Let's see, where is he? Rene is on the start straight now. And then uh, Thierry, yeah, just right there behind Ryan Neal. So... Paul Brunet, 26 spot, survived all the way through, has been riding for two hours and 23 minutes, crosses the line in 26th. Well done to him. Uh, we'll check out Danny Thierry in a minute. Let's get back to our 11th place finisher as he's about to come on to the start straight, Ryan Neal. Ryan Neal going to bring this one home in the 11th spot. Great ride for him as well. Could have had a shot at a top 10, but fell apart a little bit late in the race. Still really well done. Gets 11th. And then the hero of the race. You guys have all stuck around to see him get it done. Danny Thierry. He was lapped on the third lap of the race. He passed all the guys that decided to disconnect. 
And Danny Thierry, look at him. He's wheeling. He's stoked. The 917 machine. He's going to pick up 27th place in this race. Love to see it. Two hours. And what is that? Two hours and 24 minutes and six seconds. Danny Thierry, three laps across the line. Well done. He has finished this race. And now we get to see all of our other runners bring it on home from here. So we've seen Ryan Neal finish. Uh, Loris Modart has Devin Davis pretty close behind him. Rico DeLatt, Anton Carlson, John Mushy, and Jez Titley, David Bradley, Tio Tesserone. Thomas Lavillaroy is the last guy that will finish this one in 20th. Uh, we're going to have to wait another probably 20 minutes for him to finish, maybe 15 minutes. He's still not on the second half of the racetrack just yet. But uh, how about those guys getting up into the top 20? Good rides for them. Anton Carlson just going down. Has no one near him, so he's fine. Evan Davis still charging, trying to get to Loris Modard on this final lap. So Modard working through the rock, rock gardens back here. Uh-oh, Modard just went down. Here comes Devin Davis in the background. This is going to be a gnarly close finish for the 12 spot in this one. Modard hopping through. We got a few more corners left to go, and he just had a huge swap. Oh, boy. Davis is trying to get this thing close. How close will it end up being? Another mistake for Modard. Here comes Devin Davis. Right there. That's how close it is for the 12 spot in this one. Two hours and 26 minutes into it. And Modard swings wide. Davis is going to cut low, but he tucks the front end. Look at how close they are. They're literally neck and neck on the straightaway after almost two and a half hours of racing. And Loris Modard will cross the line and finish in 12th. Devin Davis crosses in 13th. Only 1.3 seconds back. That certainly could come down to penalties. Really close fight at the flag between those two. Great battle all the way to the very end. So next up will be Rico Delat. And we'll see the 18 machine bring it down the straightaway here in just a moment. So Delat checks in onto the start straight one more time. We got everybody popping wheelies on the start straight. They're just happy they made it. Big old wheelie for Rico DeLat. Showing off for the crowd. Why not? Tosh Dixon says, most hectic race he's ever done. Rico DeLat ends up in 14th place. Congratulations on finishing. Two hours, 27 minutes and 33 seconds was the, looks like, official time for Rico DeLat. But yeah, kudos, Taj, for finishing the race. Solid effort there for you, sir. Anton Carlson, but uh, yeah, Taj Dixon, eighth place. I would be pretty stoked with eighth in this race. <laughs> Reno Brennan says, major choke by him for the top five. Happy to have done better than last year, though. Good job, Reno. Anton Carlson of the Burb Moto program checks on to the start straight away. And he will finish this one up in the 15 spot. Through the final corner, and there it is, Anton Carlson. Over the line, John Mushy still coming through, Jez Titley, David Bradley, Teo Tesseron, and Thomas Lavillaroy. We'll make sure we watch all the way till Lavillaroy crosses the line. We want to get his due share as well. These guys obviously still working their way around. Any of these guys actually close to each other? Let's see. 85 seconds for Titley, 51 for Bradley. Go test on pretty far back now. So the closest is Bradley to 17th, Chez Titley. 
but uh, it would be a pretty gnarly sequence of events. John Mushy's going to finish the race here pretty quickly. And yes, a big shout out to everybody who raced and everybody who finished, of course. Even bigger shout out to you guys. Um, Lidzor in the chat, Matthias Lidman checking in. Well done to you as well for the third place finish. I know you really wanted to get Holgerson for second. Close racing. Good racing as well. You guys were really fair with each other. It was a fun race to call. So John Mushy, the JIBR.co. Oh yeah, no problem, Xander. Thank you guys for going out there and showing you what showing it what you're made of out there. Uh, Xander finishing up in the 21 spot. Appreciate it. So John Mushy gonna bring it on to the start straight. Woo! Backflip almost. It's all right. He's cruising. Final straightaway for John Mushy. He'll end up in the 16 ride. There we go. Cross the line. John Mushy finishes up in 16th. Congratulations on the finish. Well done to the 94 ride there. Jez Titley next up on the finishers list for the Ribena program 478, I believe that is. Oh, I love that. Xander enjoyed every minute he was out there. It doesn't matter that ended up getting lapped right at the end. Almost got a chance to do another lap and maybe finish in the top 20. He still had fun. And that's what it's all about, man. This is a, a challenging game. This is a really challenging track. And to go out there and just experience it and get the, the joy of actually finishing this race, that's what we love to see here at the Gotland Grand National. <laughs> it didn't bother him that he got lapped. Yeah, one one less lap to do. <laughs> cool to see. All right, Jez Titley, one final wheelie down the straightaway, and he is going to cross the line in 17th. Well done. So David Bradley, Teo Tesseron, and Thomas Lavillaroy still yet to finish. We'll bring him all the way to the flag. David Bradley is in his final few corners, though. Good for him to get it done here in 18th spot. Oh, down right before the Rock Garden. So Teo Tesseron will be another couple minutes behind him. So about five minutes until all of our finishers are through in this one. But here's Bradley working through the Rock Garden one final time. Hey, Taj Dixon, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate the support. <laughs> David Bradley's doing backflips off the track. And thank you, Suprico. Suprico, maybe. Not sure how you say it, but thank you so much for the follow. Again, please, guys, if you can, it really helps if you subscribe. Use that Twitch Prime of yours if you got it. Uh, we are going to be streaming all the RF Nationals and Supercrosses right here on Start Your Systems TV next season. So more subs, the better for us. Helps us uh, put on the show. And thank you, uh, Xander Vossabeld, as well, for the follow. Uh, no, so we still will be having a YouTube channel. It's actually a second YouTube channel called Start Your Systems TV. That's where all of our broadcasts will live. Uh, you can watch the full VODs there. But uh, the main channel, we're actually going through a little bit of kind of a, a slight rebranding of the main channel so uh yeah all right david bradley has crossed in 18th teo tesseron and thomas of Villaroy are the only riders still to go shout out to uh t shoon for the follow as well 
guys pushing us up to the 5,111 follower mark, so thank you so much for that. Oh, Lizor, yes, thank you so much for the sub. Appreciate you, boss man. Look at that, we're now at nine subs. Nine whole subs. You guys are the bomb, I appreciate it so much. And Le Fishy, thank you so much for the sub. Uh oh, hype train incoming. <laughs> Limited time to earn exclusive emotes with the hype train. Interesting. I don't know how any of this works. I haven't streamed on Twitch in a little bit there. Sub gift or use bits to get to the next level. So what do we do? Complete level one with a combined contribution of four tier one subs or 1600 bits. Right on. All right, Thomas Lavilleroy is working his way to the back section of the track. Only a little bit left to go. Theo Tesserone is in the last of the rock gardens here in the middle. The RBT 512 machine goes over the bars heavily. Thomas Lavilleroy. We're going to bring him all the way home, folks. He's going to be the longest running rider on this track. We are over two and a half hours of race time so far. Oh, and he just went down. Okay, with Tesserone. Weaving his way through these sections here in the middle. Coming to the final few sections for him up here shortly. Yeah, usually I think this corner right here has is about five, six corners left to go because you go through this garden, this rock garden coming up here in just a minute. Or actually, no, it doubles back. Okay, we're close. It's not too far away. I love it. I love all you guys in chat cheering on our final finishers, Teo and Thomas. I hope I'm saying it right. I know it could be Theo, but I feel like Tesserone sounds like a French name. I guess I could just look on the MXS EMF website and see what nationality they are. Yep. To, uh, Teo Tesserone would be how I'd pronounce that for a French name. And Le Villaroy is uh, French, so it's actually Thomas Le Villaroy. <laughs> Le Fishy is actually Ethan on there. All right, I got it. Okay. Villaroy working through the rock gardens. Here is Tesserone. Final couple corners for him. Work through here and then off these little drop offs right here is a massive rock garden with some logs. And then he's really only got like three corners left to go for Teo Tesserone. Going to pick it up in 19th spot. And he'll have ended up, he'll have ridden this track for about two hours and 40 minutes straight of riding enduro. These are the real warriors. I know, obviously, Ethan Parks, he finished this race a long time ago. It's been, uh, yeah, it's been almost 30, what, 35 minutes since Parks finished this race. And obviously, super, super talented. But these guys, these are the enduro warriors right here, man. They just kept going. They never gave up. They're doing the longest race probably of their life at the moment. And here we go, folks. Let's hear it for Teo Tesserone. Little loop out coming onto the start straight. He is going to finish this thing up in just under two hours and 40 minutes. 
We're just about to be at 2 hours and 39 minutes right here. So Teo Tesserone on the 512 RBT machine is going to be our 19th place finisher of the Gotland Grand National. Well done, sir. And we will wait for Thomas uh, Tomas Villaroy. The 196 machine. Still out here grinding, still out here working. Did he closed the gap down? Yeah, he did. He got it from like 290 seconds down to 150 here on these last couple laps. And he's only got a few few more straightaways left to work through. He's working through some of these tricky sections right here. This is a split lane right here. Villaroy just working his way through the rollers. Two hours and 40 minutes have now elapsed. We are at 160 minutes that these guys have been playing this track straight. And Tomas Lovillaroy has done every single lap, has hit every single section, has raced for every single minute. And he is about to finally bring this thing home. Only a few corners left. He's going to make it, folks. What a ride. Let's cheer him all the way home, folks. When he gets on that main straightaway, let's uh, let's get some W's in the chat for Tomas Lavillaroy. I know. I want to see all the cuts, too. The cuts are going to be gnarly. Final few corners. He's got one, two, three, four corners left to go now. Now he's got three corners left to go. Now you'll be able to see the cuts. The list of riders that have finished is not long enough. Actually, you're right because of all the guys that didn't finish. That's a good point. I forgot about that. Won't be able to see how many cuts, but we'll see if positions change at least. We know what is kind of close right now. The battle for second is pretty close. The battle for 12th was pretty close. All right, final straightaway. Let's see the W's in chat for Thomas Lavillaroy. W's all the way home for the Frenchman. He qualified this thing in the 74 spot. He will finish the race in 20th. And the Gotland Grand National is over. Thomas Lavillaroy brings it home in 20th. The W's in chat are a flowing. And we are done. Any position changes? Wow, I'm actually impressed. No position changes after penalty is applied in the top 20 at least. Let's see anything else. Nope, and then everything behind this was DNF. So well done. Let's give credit to all 27 of our finishers. Danny Thierry, Paul Brunet, Oakley Kettle, Brandon Huntington, Ben Sullivan, Tobias Schitz, uh, Xander Vosseveld, Tomas Villaroy, Teo Tesserone, David Bradley, Jez Titley, John Mushy, Anton Carlson, Rico Delat, Devin Davis, Lois or Loris Mod Modard, uh, Ryan Neal, Mozart, Nate Van Tottenham, uh, Taj Dixon, Bodie Parker, Reno Brennan, Jack Gatlin, Josh Collins, Matthias Lidman, Jacob Holgerson, and your winner of the 2023 Gotland Grand National, Ethan Parks. What a race! What an event! Two hours and forty-two minutes of racing is done ladies and gentlemen thank you for tuning in today to the gotland grand national nmx simulator thank you guys so much for watching that race that was hectic it was a lot of fun to stream and i appreciate uh everyone who tuned in i appreciate lidman for allowing me to stream the race also putting some banners on the track and uh giving us a lot of fun to call this action 2023 gotland grand national done and dusted shout out to ethan parks the winner Shout out to all 27 finishers this year and shout out to all of you guys that tuned in and watched. Thank you guys again. I'll give a, a quick shout out to our subs. Uh, Lefishi Lidzor uh, subbed during this stream. Let's see who else we got. Uh, Shirley, the resub as well. So thank you guys so much for subbing up. Appreciate it so much. And um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. So I'm going to send you guys on your way. We're going to have some more off-season races probably coming that we'll stream down the line. 
But enjoy the rest of your guys' weekend, wherever you guys are, and uh, get a good night's sleep if you're in Europe and your thumbs are tired from this race. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.